four, three, two, one. Happy, Happy New Year! Year. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's go. For for my New Year's resolution, I'm gonna go on a diet. Nice. Oh, oh, and I'm gonna quit vaping. Let's yeah. Do it. Oh, and uh, I, I'm gonna go vegan. Oh, nice. yeah. And I'm gonna stop beating my meat. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, three days later. <laughs> Man, fuck the diet. Right? I didn't even want to go vegan anyways. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, what, where's Jonathan? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna keep it a stack. This New Year's resolution thing is a whole lot of bullshit. Some goddamn buffoonery. A heaping pile of... A fucking horse cut. Like, don't get me started on these new year, new me, motherfuckers, man. Like, dyeing your hair and getting another piercing doesn't change shit. Now you're just broke, depressed, and lonely in a different font. And I'm not gonna pretend like I don't see you motherfuckers in the gym for the first two weeks. Like, come on now. You and I both know as soon as you get out of this gym, you're about to pick up a large strawberry milkshake, a Big Mac with no pickles, and a side of chicken nuggets and it's disgusting but 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 chains how do you know down to the exact specifications of the order cuz shit I'm about to get the same damn thing because the devastating truth is a new year doesn't change jack shit and if you're watching this in 2022 I'm really not trying to kill the hopes and dreams of 2023 but let's be honest if you really wanted to be jacked you would start working out bro like I hate to be the bearer of bad news but the earth orbiting the sun one more time isn't gonna get you any bitches bro <clears throat> cuz trust me <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would know. Now, as a stick man like myself, I can't fuck with New Year's resolutions because it's always the same shit. Like three, two, one. Happy, happy New, New Year's. Year's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey man, uh, Happy New Year's. Uh, well, what's your New Year's resolution? Oh, it's uh, it's 1080p. What about you? Oh yeah, same, same. But 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 did you see Ethan, bro? Nah, what's his? Yo, he's got 4K. Yo, what's up, dudes? Oh, look at the quality on this guy. Damn, what? Wait, do you, do you hear that noise? Yeah, what is that? Oh, shit, it's Chains. He, he got 480p again. Shit. Damn, that whole New Year's resolution bit was unfunny as fuck. Like, corny as shit. Well, speaking of corny jokes, New Year seems like the time when motherfuckers feel like it's okay to start whipping out the most Ten, overused nine, and unfunniest eight, jokes seven, of all six, time. Five, oh, oh, four, hey, Chains, uh, three, oh, well, watch two, this. One. Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, hey, Chains, uh, I, I haven't seen you since last year. <laughs> So you know how it's going to be 2020 soon, right? Yeah, w what about it? Well, I got 2020 vision. Now, I know it sounds like I'm on some bahumbug shit, but New Year's does have a lot of great things about it. Like the parties, the the fireworks, the uh the uh, uh the parties. And so you may be thinking, "Chains, why are you like the Grinch of New Year's resolutions? Why do you hate New Year's resolutions so much?" Well, the, the truth is, my hatred for New Year's resolutions dates way, way, way back to 2016. It was December 31st, New Year's Eve, 11.59 p.m. This was the very day when a young hopeful chains decided my New Year's resolution would be to acquire a girlfriend. I tried and I tried, but as 2022 comes to an end, my girlfriend remains unacquired. Alright, I already touched on the unspeakable things that go down in the high school bathrooms, bro. But there's only one place on earth that is more foul than those bathrooms. And it's the goddamn locker rooms. That room smells like complete and utter dog shit mixed with axe spray. Like maybe I just went to school with a whole lot of discord mods, but the rancid smell of the boys locker room would contaminate anything in a 50 foot radius. 
and shit, lord knows what goes down in that questionable place. Like, you'll walk in there and see anything, bro. Motherfuckers will be having fights, chicken fights, group fights, sword fights. Like, any laws and rules simply don't apply to the boys' locker room. Motherfuckers will be throwing hands, selling drugs, committing arson, committing several counts of fucking tax evasion shit you name it it's pretty much a gta lobby in that bitch like i remember one day i walked into pe and my teacher was like hey no uh uh where's your pe strip and i was like shit it's in the locker room so i walk into the locker room and there's just two motherfuckers throwing hands and they just stop and look at me like oh shit uh it's, I, I'm, I'm gonna just get my backpack and shit so yeah uh, Alright, y'all be safe. And then they just went back to beating the shit out of each other. Now listen, I don't spend too much time in the girls' locker room. But anytime I walk by there, that shit smells like rose petals and rainbows. So I can only imagine there's no group fights, no chicken fights. Uh, hopefully no fucking sword fights. And bro... You deadass can't leave shit in the locker room. Like, if you leave anything not locked up, it's gone. These kids are ruthless, bro. They're snatching your wallet, your phone, your clothes. Shit, they're taking your PB&J sandwich. And the thing is, if you want your PB&J back, you're gonna have to get it back in blood because there's no laws in the locker room. See, if someone snatched my sandwich in math class, I'm turning into 6'9", bro. <clears throat> Mr. Cumminson, uh, J Jordan Johnson here who lives on 123 Stickman Drive, postal code STK53Z, just stole my peanut butter and jelly sandwich my mom made me, so I'ma need his ass suspended. But if you try to tell a teacher about anything that happened in the locker rooms, they don't give a fuck. M Mr. Principal, uh, J Jordan Johnson just stabbed me and stole my backpack, my phone, my wallet, and my ID. Damn, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, where did this happen? It was in the locker room after P. Oh, you said the locker room? <laughs> You're just gonna have to get it back in blood. B b b b b b back in blood? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The way you're snitching right now, uh, you kind of look like a bitch. But yo, one time me, Billy, and Bob were coming back to the locker room after some good old dodgeballing. Billy notices a dude rummaging through his backpack. So he's like, yo, yo, w what are you doing, bro? <laughs> but when he turned around, Billy was bamboozled to find out the kid rummaging through his bag he was special. And there was just this moment of silence. Yo, am I supposed to like, like beat his ass right now? Or, or, bro, I'm sure you didn't take anything. Just politely ask for your bag back. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, hey, man. <laughs> Can I get my bag back, please? And the kid just, just hugged Billy. And then he left. And I'm still confused to this day. But I'm gonna be honest. Locker rooms weren't all that bad. Cause sometimes you walk in that hole and they would just be throwing a party. Now it still smells like ass and there was literally no females, but it was still kind of lit. Like you'd walk in there and it would transform into the club. Shout out my label, there's me. I'm in this bitch with TP. I'm in this bitch with train. Or you'll walk in there and th they'll just be giving out free pizza. Like, like walking into the locker room is a gamble. You might walk in there and get robbed or, or you'll get some fucking pizza. I don't know. But what I do know is there's only 10 types of dudes in the locker room. Starting with that one kid who must have thought it was the 1800s the way he was whipping motherfuckers. Next, we got the poor guy who's just trying to change. He's quiet. He's normal, and uh, he, he changes. It's a locker room, so it makes sense. Then we got that one poor soul who gets absolutely cooked by the entire locker room. Yo, why is Kevin built like Mike Wazowski? <laughs> Bro's got no neck. <laughs> We're stick men. None of us have neck. Shut up. You skip neck. Yeah, he skips <laughs> neck. Next, we got Bob. Bob's just that guy that casually takes his shirt off and he's built like Giga Chad, like shit. Fucking sexy ass Bob. 
And I don't know why, but there was always that one guy who thought it was a good idea to just, just whip his nuts out. Unprovoked, uncalled for, completely out of pocket. Like, what do you look like with your nuts out in a room with 30 half-naked sweaty dudes? Like, personally in that situation, I'm keeping my balls in my boxers. Thank you very much. And bro, tell me why there was always one kid who was just dousing himself in axe spray. And it's always the mustiest motherfucker doing it too. Like who's gonna tell him that axe spray doesn't replace taking showers, bruh? And I don't know about your locker room, but for mine, there was always a dude eating. Like out of all the places on earth, why are you eating in the locker room? Like for some reason, there's something about eating around a bunch of dudes in their boxers that just doesn't sit right with me. I mean, simply by bringing that sandwich into the locker room makes it contaminated. That sandwich will be tasting like wet dog and axe spray. And next, we got the kid who just makes as much noise as humanly possible. Shut the yeah, fuck shut the up. God, damn. And then there's that one dude who decides he's having a shower. And all power to that guy, but personally, there is no fucking way I'm showering in school. Like, I can't trust this little door to stop these menaces from breaking into my shower. Because remember, there's no laws in the locker room. Like, it's no jail, but I'm sure if you drop the soap in there, you're gonna get violated. And of course, you got the fiend. There's always a dude fiending for a vape in every locker room. And it's low-key worse in the locker room than the bathrooms. Like, these locker room fiends would do a little bit too much for some nicotine. I've seen them pay $5 for a single hit and fuck. I don't want to know what they'll do for a hit when they run out of money. And still, I'm not gonna lie, the high school bathrooms get wild. They'll be hotboxed, there'll be fight clubs, but the thing about the bathrooms is a teacher can walk in at any time and get every student suspended. Like even the poor kid taking a piss will probably get suspended just by association. Which is exactly why the high school locker rooms get so fucking rowdy. Because there's truly no teacher strong enough to stop the buffoonery that goes on in these locker rooms. So they don't even try. Shit, I don't care if your teacher is John Cena. There is no single man who can put a stop to the fuck shit that goes down in the locker rooms. But there is one thing that can a female as a broke stick man like myself i spent my fair share of time on the bus and if you spend a long enough time on the bus you will see some weird ass shit. I mean, I remember my first time getting on the bus by myself. I was feeling strong and independent. Next thing I know, a crackhead sits down beside me talking about Yabba dabba do. The, the world is ending and uh, you're gonna die a painful and lonely death, buddy. <laughs> and just like that, I went from strong and independent to shitting my pants. Yeah, bro, the bus is just something else. Like, one in ten people who enter the bus are straight gremlins, bro. I'm talking about the gremlins who know the perk is fake but they still pop it. Now you just gotta sit next to this motherfucker for another 30 minutes while he tells you about the kids in his basement. But to be fair, these gremlins aren't even the worst part of the bus. The worst part of the bus is the energy. You walk in there and everyone just stops and looks at you like they're sizing you up or some shit. And you know who sizes you up the most? The fucking goddamn motherfucking bus driver, bro. These bus drivers are just eternally pissed off. Every time I would get off the bus, I would try and cheer bro up, but they're just like like allergic to happiness or some shit. Hey, thank you. Have a great day, man. Shut your ugly ass up, little boy. I already know you get no bitches with your big ass forehead, no drip having ass with your skinny ass arms. Boy, you're built like a stick, man, bruh. Damn. Hey, bro, there could really only be two reasons why these bus drivers are so mad all the time. Either they had a demon villain origin story where they were abandoned as a child and never shown any form of love until one day. In freshman year of high school, Timmy met Linda. Linda was kind, smart, beautiful, and she paid attention to Timmy when nobody else would. Timmy asked Linda to be his girlfriend 
and she said yes. They dated all throughout high school and they even got into the same university so they could be together forever. Until one day when Timmy's world was flipped upside down. Timmy found out Tyrone had been laying some mean pipe on Linda this entire time. Everyone in Timmy's school made fun of him. Timmy could not let this slide. So he called out Tyrone to run the ones in front of the entire school. And without a single word, Tyrone winds up and hits Timmy with the meanest left hook any stick man had ever seen. Leaving Timmy slept, out cold, unconscious, in front of his classmates, his teachers, and even in front of Linda. Cause shit, if that happened to me, I'd be just as mad as Timmy over here. Now, realistically, the only other reason these drivers are so constantly mad would be because the driver's seat secretly has a stick built in. You see, this would explain why the driver constantly has a stick up his ass. I mean, shit, you really can't even blame him for being mad. But still, I'm gonna blame him. Cause I know these motherfuckers get pleasure whenever they see me running at full speed trying to make it to the bus stop in time. Cause they start stepping on the gas. <laughs> Dumbass. To be honest, there's nothing that leaves you more defeated than when you're sprinting to a bus stop. Then that shit just cruises on by and everyone on the bus is laughing at you. Damn. Honestly, at that point. I just give up and go home. But it hits a little bit different when that bus is your only way home. And it was the last bus. Cause it's 2 a.m. And now you gotta bunk up with the gremlins on the side of the street. All because that goddamn bus driver had a stick up his ass. Man, summer is just a beautiful season. The sun is shining, the trees are green, and you can stay out with your homies all night. And best of all, you get to sleep in till that shit gets absolutely fucked by the first day of school. And waking up to that first alarm of the school year will have you discombobulated as hell like chains, square doodle mat salami mouse. Mm. What? <sighs> you heard me, square doodle mat salami mouse. Wait. Wait, huh? Really? Ketor's Claw Bosomorph. Man, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah! Wait, what the fuck? And even though getting out of bed early hurts your soul, it's absolutely necessary you spend at least five minutes staring at your wall, contemplating your entire life. And if you're a real G, you laid out your toughest fit the night before, so you're low-key hyped to rock that shit to school. So you throw on your new shoes and flick up for the first day of school. And then you walk over to the establishment where you will not only pursue your educational prowess, but you may also dabble in what some call stunting on these hoes and man i will say linking up with your boys on the first day of school just hits different like i be reuniting with the homies like i didn't just see them 12 hours ago and we're all happy and shit until the school bell reminds me i just got my ass locked up for another 10 months and i don't know about y'all but i don't think i've ever made it to my first class of the year on time like it'll be 9 15 and my dumb ass will still be trying to figure out how to make it to room 347 by 8 55 and walking into your first class of the year late has to be one of the most uncomfortable situations you can experience, bro. Because the teacher will be like, oh, and who are you? Oh, uh, I I'm Chains. Well, Chains, why are you late? Uh, b because the bell rang before I got here. <sighs> All right, whatever. We waited for you before we started introductions. Oh, no, you shouldn't have. Well, you're welcome. We just wanted you to feel... No, like, you, you really shouldn't have, like... I don't want to do this shit. And tell me why all these teachers have been copy-pasting the same icebreaker games since preschool. Like that one where you have to start with an adjective that starts with the same letter as your name. Like, how do you have a group of legal adults in a circle, awkward as hell, talking about, uh, hi guys, I'm, I'm Super Sarah. Hey, hey y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm Awesome Aiden. And I'm, 
Um, I'm a marvelous Marvin. Shit, if we don't stop doing these fucking icebreakers, I'm about to joyfully jump off a cliff. And after we're done grinding out icebreakers, these teachers have the audacity to show a whole 50 slide PowerPoint all about them. Like the fuck? This class is supposed to be the study of math, not the study of your daughter's soccer games, bro. And I'm not even gonna lie, my dumb ass will be out there taking notes, wondering how this seven-year-old's goals per game ratio is gonna help me on my trigonometry test. Then just as soon as you survive all that bullshit, you gotta go to the next class and do that shit again. And by the time you've learned half your teacher's favorite hiking spots and relationship statuses, you're relieved to hear the lunch bell. Only to find out the cafeteria is serving straight ass with a side of booty for lunch. And my standards aren't even high. Like during summer, I was on a seafood diet as they would say. When I see food... I eat that shit. But when it comes to this cafeteria food, I could even bring myself to smell that abomination they're calling meatloaf. But even though the food was straight dokey, I won't lie, it's kinda nice being back at the lunch table freestyling with the homies. But of course, all good things must come to an end. So the bell rings and I go to depart ways with the homies. All right, peace out, man. Yeah, see ya, bro. Oh shit, <laughs> are we going the same way? Damn, yeah, I guess so. All right, peace out for real. Yeah, yeah, see ya, bro. <clears throat> shit. Alright, my class is right here. Bro. Me too! Oh, shit. Let's go! Uh, Alright, class. I'm gonna be taking some attendance. Uh, correct me if I get your name wrong. Uh, Jason. Here. Uh, Billy. Yo. Megan. Present. Chains. Here. Charlie. That's me. Bob. No fucking Bro. way. Bro. Is there any, is there any Bobs in the room? Yo, yo, do you, do you hear that? Is that intro music? Does anyone here know a bar? Oh, 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 man, nothing beats a class where you got all the boys sitting together. Like, from the jump, you already know you're all about to fail the fuck out of that shit, but it's gonna be fun as hell. Alright, so, uh, everyone introduce yourselves and tell us what you did over summer break. Uh, m m my name's Bartholomew. <laughs> My, my name's Bartholomew, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, uh, I had a pretty rough summer, I mean, I crashed my car, my girlfriend broke up with me, someone robbed my house, my grandma got jumped the other day. <laughs> no, bro, not the grandma. You three in the back, disrespectful. And what's crazy about the first day of the school year is how these teachers will act all nice talking about, it's so lovely to see all your beautiful faces, and it's also nice to see you, Aiden. Wait, 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 wait. what the fuck? We're gonna have have an amazing fun year and guess what there's no homework today knowing damn well they're about to make up for it with twice as much homework tomorrow like they'll for real be handing out kindergarten ass coloring sheets the first day and then tomorrow you're getting your ass whooped by some calculus worksheets and i didn't even talk about the motherfuckers you'll be seeing in the halls on the first day like i don't know what these dudes be going through in those two months but motherfuckers be going from arthur kennedy to ak real fast bro Oh shit, is that you, Arthur? Oh, gee, don't be dropping the government name like that. G gov government name? But but that's just your first name. Hey fam, it's AK. I uh, I man, what you been up to, bro? Hey fam, I'm trapping, trying to make it out of the mud, you know? The, 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 the mud? You live in a gated community. Oh shit, that's the ops right there, fam. Get down. The, the ops? That, that's just fucking Edward. Or the way these new freshmen be walking like they're scared a senior's gonna slap the books out of their hands and take their Fortnite V-Bucks gift card. Like, bro, you freshmen are worried about the wrong V-Card. Like, I don't know why, but the day these kids go from sophomore to seniors, they instantly decide to pull an EDP. Like, bro... You're 18 and she's fresh out of middle school. That's a whole crime. But that's not the only crime motherfuckers be committing on the first day of school. Some dudes be pulling up to school with the most atrocious fits known to man. Like there's no fucking way you laid out this ramen noodle chicken soup ass fit the night before slept on it then woke up and thought oh yeah that the hoes are gonna love this one like i'm not gonna lie you could never catch me wearing the types of fit these motherfuckers be wearing bro like that shit should have never made it out the closet like i don't condone bullying 
But all I'ma say is, your actions have consequences, bro. Speaking of consequences, every year it seems like the rules teachers tell you on the first day keep getting more strict. Like, you'll be walking into the first class of the year all jolly and shit. All of a sudden, you're getting your shit smacked by the longest list of class rules you've ever seen. Hey class, I'm super excited to have you. We're gonna have so much fun this year, but first, I'm gonna go over some of the class rules. Okay, so there will be no negativity, no phones, no food, no talking when I'm talking. Actually, no talking ever, no laughing, no smiling, breathe as quiet as possible, no washroom breaks, and last but not least, no having fun. So yeah, guys, like I said, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun this year. And just like that, man, summer's over and you're back to school. It's possibly one of the worst times of the year. Like, do you really think it's a coincidence that when school starts up, the sun just starts hiding and the leaves start dying? You, you see what I'm implying? But I will say, one day you might just look back back on these times is the good old days and you might just start crying Halloween is the spookiest time of the year. Everywhere you look, it's vampires, killer clowns, old dudes in white vans trying to steal some children, which are all very scary things, especially killer clowns. But none of these spooky things scare me more than my worst fear. Going to jail, dropping the soap, and getting my booty snatched up. Now that's some real spooky shit right there. And I know some people are going to be thinking, oh, that's just a myth. It's a stereotype. Nobody actually gets their booty snatched up for dropping some soap but when it comes to my booty i don't want to fuck around and i sure as hell don't want to find out but everyone knows drinking can heavily influence your judgment and on one specific day my judgment was affected and i found myself fucking around and everyone knows what the chart depicts the more you fuck around the more you find out this story takes place in grade 10 it was a crisp halloween night the houses were decorated the leaves had fallen and the jackals were landing Turn. And as me and Billy walked down to the homie Bob's crib, we could pretty much smell that Halloween spirit. And when we knocked on Bob's door, we were surprised the homie Bob didn't open the door. It was Bob the Builder. Dude was fully suited up from head to toe. And when me and Billy seen that, we already knew we needed some costumes. So we go to Bob's closet and come out absolutely dripping into Mario and Luigi costumes, mustache and everything. But now that we undeniably had that shit on, we still had yet to find something to do but lucky for us the night was still young so we got to brainstorming all right it's halloween bro we, we gotta do something yeah let's go find a party bet let me check where they're at mm -hmm. okay y yeah there's no parties bro fuck I, I mean we could trick or treat shit we might have to bro and just as three 15 year olds decided we would knock on strangers doors asking for candy our halloween was looking grim and not in a good way but you know what they say can we fix it Yes, we can. Because Bob pulls through and sets up a goddamn three-man mission. And just like that, Halloween goes from an L to a W night. And I thought the homies and I couldn't get more hype, that is, until Bob pulls out a bottle of Hennessy. And you would have thought Peach took the kids the way I was abusing that bottle. And we passed it around until we were all tipsy. Then we started walking to Chloe's house for the little Halloween three-man. And it was already 9 p.m. at this point, so we're walking through the neighborhood admiring these decorations when we see the creepiest house of them all it was chloe's crib so we walk through a whole graveyard just to knock on the door and chloe opens it looking like a whole angel i, I mean like like literally like she had the halo and the, the, the wings and shit so we go up to her room where her two friends lucy and mia were and we sit on her bed and i'm not gonna lie it was a little awkward, bro. I was sitting there with my Mario fit, my little mustache, like, so, uh, uh, uh Chloe, why'd you choose to be an angel? Uh, I don't know. I just liked it. Uh, why'd you choose to be Mario? Shit, uh, you know, uh, Mama Mia, am I right? <laughs> Shit. Fuck. Then Chloe whips out some tequila and all of a sudden we're playing drinking games and shit. But honestly, I, I was just trying to get drunk. So it'd be like, ha ha, drink up. Oh no. All right, it's your turn. W wait, you're, you're supposed to get it in my cup. What the fuck? And after purposely selling multiple games of tequila pong, I was feeling what some would call completely and utterly drunk as fuck and next thing i know we're playing spin the bottle and i was up so i spin the bottle and it spins and spins and lands on chloe and in my head i'm thinking 
And just as Mario's about to get some peaches, we hear the door open downstairs and Chloe's like, Oh shit, my parents are home. Hide. So me and the homies run into her closet with a bottle of tequila and we can hear her dad come into the room. Hey, what's going on up here? Oh, you know, we're, ju we're just watching scary movies. All right, uh, I'll be downstairs watching TV. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks, dad. And once her dad went downstairs, we all came out of the... We, e we exited the closet and Chloe said, You guys gotta sneak out through the front door. J just be super quiet. And so we creep down the stairs and peek around the corner and Chloe's parents are right there with a clear sight of the door. So we know what we have to do. We take a shot for good measure and then run to the door. And my drunk ass couldn't even figure out how to unlock this fucking door. Hey, who is that? Uh, uh, it, uh it's -a me, a Mario. Then we ran out that joint and we didn't stop running until I got a call from one of my homies named Dave. He was like, yo, what are you doing right now? Oh, no nothing really. Just drunk as hell running from Chloe's angry ass dad. Yo. That's what's up. Come link me and Joe at Stickman Elementary. And we had nothing else to do, so we pull up. And it's Dave, Dave's girlfriend, Joe, and Joe's girlfriend. And they got some couple's costumes going, but I couldn't help but notice Dave and Joe were shystied up. What are you? If the Simpsons grew up in Chicago? <laughs> nah, I'm just Homer. Yeah, but I mean, Homer doesn't usually wear a fucking ski mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I just wore this because we graffitied the hell out of this school. <laughs> Joe was here and... And Dave was too? Bro, what the fuck were you thinking? W what? Oh, you want me to include your name too? No, 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 hell no. And just as we become guilty by association, four cop cars come zooming down the street. Oh shit, it's the cops, run! And the cops hop out of their cars and start running at us with flashlights. So we head for the forest, but to get to the forest, we had to run across this long ass muddy field. And in the middle of this field, there was a huge pothole. And how did I know that? Because I seen Marge absolutely eat shit right in front of me. And don't get me wrong, I was absolutely plastered but as the cops got closer and closer i could practically see myself getting caught and dropping the soap and you know i wasn't gonna let that happen and so with all that adrenaline i mario jumped that fucking pothole and hauled ass into the forest and right when you get into the forest there was this deep creek with a log going across it but when i look back i see the cops flashlight getting brighter and brighter so i say fuck it and take a run at this log i get a good two steps and then my drunk ass slips boom right into the muddy creek but i I don't have time to give a single fuck so i run through this waist high muddy water and then we regroup and check who made it i see bob joe dave and dave's girl y yo where the fuck is billy no where's my girlfriend bro oh she ain't shit a few yards back whoa, wait wait what I is she okay did she get whoa, caught? wait shut up billy's calling yo where are you I i'm hiding behind a tree right now in the middle of the field. The, the cops are looking for me. I bet we're coming. I gotta go. Fuck no, bro. If you go, you're gonna get caught. Listen, bro. I have to. He, he's the Luigi to my Mario. So I go back in to save Billy and my main man, Bob, comes with me. So we get to the edge of the forest and see Billy absolutely shitting his pants trying to hide from these cops, but they keep getting closer and closer. So Bob turns on his flashlight and both cops look at him. He's right there. Get over here. And while the cops were looking for Bob, me and Billy both run for the street and we ran and ran but once we were at least five blocks away we text bob like bro we both made it are you good and bob's like so Bob makes it out of the forest and we all link up. And we take a moment to appreciate the fact that none of us went to jail. And more importantly, none of us got our booty snatched up. And after our moment of appreciation, we were like, yo, maybe we should have just went trick-or-treating. Yeah, bro, some Reese's Pieces would hit right now. Mm. I mean, it's not too late to buy some candy. So we all go to the store and cop the biggest packs of candy we could find. Then we walked back to Bob's crib and enjoyed the rest of our night while fucking up some house. Halloween candy. Man, way back when, there was a time when you couldn't catch anyone under the age of 30 chief in a vape. Until one day at Vaporizer Laboratories, they were cooking up and made a flavor that would change the game forever cotton candy. Now this revolutionary flavor forced these grown ass 30 year old men to take a good look in the mirror and ask themselves, damn, 
What do I look like as a grown-ass man sucking on this goddamn cotton candy stick? So they do what any responsible adult would do. They give it to their children. I mean, shit, kids love cotton candy. All of a sudden, business is booming for Vaporizer Laboratories, so they start cooking up even harder. Boom, Sour Patch Kids juice. Boom, Applesauce juice. And boom, Baby Food juice. These babies will be sucking that shit like a soother. Kids' first words will be looking like, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, honey. Jackson's yeah. gonna say his first yeah. words. Yeah. Oh, let's hear it. Yo. Y yo, pops. Well, let me bum a hit off that 50 Nick Guava Ice, G. Yo, just wait till they drop that breast milk flavor, bro. Shit, these newborn babies won't even know what hit them. They'll be returning customers for life, which. Which will probably be like 12 years max. Now, the reason I say all this is to let you know that vaping not only intruded my high school years, but also my years in middle school. I was first introduced to these bad boys at the ripe age of 13. And with a little bit of that good old peer pressure, I folded, bro. Like, what was I supposed to do, bro? Like, like not take the hit? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I probably should not have taken a hit. But from that point on, I started doing a little dabbling, you know. I, I mean, as a 13-year-old, there's only one answer to someone asking. <laughs> Yo, dude, you want to try a hit of this blueberry guacamole milkshake ice flavor, dude? And that answer is absolutely, dude. And I was never a fiend or anything, but I will say, I popped a few ghosts and blown a few O's back in my day. But it had never gone to the point of me owning a vape. Until one day. This story takes place way, way, way back in grade 7. Me and the boys were posted in science class dissecting cow balls or some shit when Mr. Principal burst through the door like, Is Tessa here? Yeah, yeah, she's right there. And I look at Tessa and she just tosses her vape over to her homie, Kate. And I seen that shit clear as day, but Mr. Principal's old ass must have forgot to wear his contacts or something. Cause he runs a quick pat down on Tessa looking for said vape, but sure enough, he doesn't find it. Miss Rhodes told me you were vaping in her class, is this true? Psst. No, I would never. <clears throat> uh, okay. And then the bell rang and everybody knew what that meant. It was nut break. Now, I don't know who the fuck decided to name our recess nut break, but I will say most of the students understood that that shit was short for nutrition break. However, some kids took it a little too literally. Weird ass school, man. But this specific nut break, you best believe me and the boys weren't busting nuts or eating nutritional foods because Billy had something else on his mind. Yo, who's got you smiling like that? Who, me? <laughs> nah, 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 it's nobody. It's nobody. Yo, wait, you got a crush on Tessa? <laughs> what? T Tessa? <laughs> me? <cr> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got a crush on, yeah. Oh, shit, go, go talk to her, bro. <laughs> talk to her. <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. Bro, it's simple. She's new to the school. She's probably looking for some friends, so just, just walk over and introduce yourself. <sighs> You're right. I, I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Yes, sir. Hey, I, 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 Y you did. Then the bell rings and we all go to PE class. Now in my middle school, your class was your class. You just have the same students and the same underqualified teacher teaching everything. Like Lord knows Mr. Donaldson shouldn't be teaching PE, but shit. Here we are. And so while we're playing dodgeball, I'm trying to coach Billy on how to confess his love for Tessa, but I'ma keep it a buck. I was speaking straight out of my ass, bro. I don't know the first thing about confessing love. Listen, bro, I'm the expert when it comes to confessing love. All you gotta do is walk up with confidence, introduce yourself, and then ask her to be your girlfriend, bro. <sighs> okay, simple. Let let's practice. <clears throat> hey, Vanessa. <laughs> my name's Billy, and, um... Do you want to be my girlfriend? Damn! And after the proper training, by the time lunch came around, Billy was prepared to do what had to be done. I right, listen, bro. Whatever happens out there, me and Bob got your back. And remember, the worst she can say is no, bro. <sighs> Alright, I'm ready. You got this. Uh, hey Vanessa, I I'm Billy. Um, I, I seen you in science class today, and you were looking very pretty. And um, is it do you want to? Do you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no! <laughs> she laughed, bro. She laughed in Billy's face. And he walks back to us with tears in his eyes. 
She laughed at me, bro. Well, at least at least you you know what they say. What what? If if you can make her laugh and giggle, you can make the cheeks clap and jiggle. Not right now, bro. You're right. Too soon. Too soon. Needless to say, that brother Billy went home that night, listened to Juice World, and cried himself to sleep. Shit. The next day, Billy didn't even say a word, but I could hear lucid dreams on full blast in those earbuds. Man, it's a tough sight to see. Next thing I know, Mr. Principal bursts in the class talking about all right tessa in my office right now now i don't know why she was in trouble but whatever she was accused of she's guilty bro and she's also guilty on one third degree count of breaking my man's heart and as i'm busy praying on tessa's downfall i get a little tap on my shoulder like Psst, take this mr principal's looking for it and he's not gonna check you Who, whose is it it's tessa don't worry it's safe with me and it was safe with me because that shit was now mine. The only way she could get it back is if she repaired my boy Billy's heart. And that just wasn't happening. And soon enough, Tessa comes back from Mr. Principal's office and she didn't say a word. We had nut break, nothing. We went to PE, nothing. And then we went to math class. And as I was chilling in math class, calculating the square root of pi and shit, I get a tap on my shoulder again. Psst, Tessa wants her vape back. Vape? What vape? The, the, the one I handed you this morning. You, you know, it, it was purple. And... Oh, that vape. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I threw that shit in the bushes. <gasps> so she reports back to the person who gave her the vape, and she reports back to the person who gave her the vape, etc., etc. Until Tessa finds out, and she looks pissed. So she whispers to her friend, who whispers to her friend, etc., etc. What, what, what bush did you throw it in? Oh, the. The, the one out back. And to put it in perspective, the bush out back was fucking massive. It was this huge conglomerate of straight prickle bushes. And so pretty much, her vape was gone, bro. And I went to sleep that night with a smile on my face, knowing I not only saved Tessa's lungs, but also Billy's heart. The next day, I went to class, sat down with the boys as always, but something was different. Tessa and her homies were nowhere to be seen. I shrug it off and continue to make some groundbreaking studies in science class until i hear billy like bro no fucking way so i turn around to not only see tessa and her friends waist high in prickle bushes looking for this vape but i also see mr principal forcing them to do it now this was truly a beautiful sight to see revenge play out this perfectly like billy was sitting at the window the entire class watching him do a whole search party for this vape that was posted in my pocket. And just when I thought Billy couldn't get happier, the next day, Tessa and her friends had to present a PowerPoint to the entire school on why vaping is bad. Uh, so, uh, vaping is bad because, like, like, uh, when the vape enters your lungs, well, it's not good for your lungs. <laughs> Man, karma is real, because not only did Tessa understand how it felt to be laughed at, but the next day, my friend came up to me like, can I use that vape for the day? And I wasn't using that shit, so I said, yeah, sure. And at the end of the day, you'll never guess what she told me, bro. Yo, you still got the vape? No, no, I, I threw it in the bush out back. There's levels to friendships. I mean, you could have known your homie since you were two years old. You could have lived together. I mean, you could have survived the whole zombie apocalypse together. But shit, the truth is, you haven't truly experienced brotherhood until you and your homie have participated in a two-man mission. Like, just look at Kobe and Shaq, man. That type of chemistry can only be achieved by running a two-man. Shit, I bet these motherfuckers were running two-mans every night. And you already know Kobe was laying down that mamba mentality while Shaq had his girl, oh, kneeling. But for those of you who may be wondering, Chains, what the hell is a two-man mission? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's quite simple, really. It's when you're gonna link with a girl, but you bring your homie and she brings her homie. And what this does is it sets an environment when you and your homie me can dribble, pass, alley-oop, and ideally dunk that shit. Now don't get me wrong, it's simple, but not easy. I remember my first two-man mission like it was yesterday. It took place when I was in grade seven. And it started when my friend Joe hit me up like, yo bro, I'm going to this girl Sophie's house and her friend Ava's there. You, you trying to pull up? And I was like, am I trying to pull up? Hell yeah, I'm trying to pull up. So we show up to her house and I'm new to this whole thing. So I'm sitting there like, ah, so up. Uh, 
what now? We, we could watch a scary movie. Yeah, let's do it. Calm down. Uh, well, actually, uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of scary movies. Man, shut the fuck. So we're watching a scary movie, and to be honest with you, it was simply the best scary movie I'd ever seen in my entire life. So I was really getting invested in this plot. And Ava's like, oh my god, I'm scared. <laughs> and that shit went way over my head. Well, why? It's not even at the scary part yet. And then only 30 minutes into the movie, Joe and Sophie are like, Yo, we'll be right back. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, do you guys want me to pause the movie? <laughs> nah, it's all good, bro. And you see, what Joe just did right there was a calculated move. In basketball terms, he just set an ISO. So now it was two 1v1s. And the situation was absolutely perfect, but the problem was... I actually like the fucking movie. And that violates rule number three in section seven of how to pull off a successful two man never give a fuck about the movie because the truth is the movie length is like the shot clock if you end up actually watching the entire movie you failed the mission but i had no clue and to be honest i, I didn't even know what a two man was at the time so i got some popcorn and i was just watching the movie but when the climax of the movie was about to come around i did something that violated every term and agreement of the two man mission i went over to joe and sophie like like, hey, hey guys, quick, you're gonna miss the best pro- Oh, fuck. And I missed the climax of the movie, but shit, I seen a climax. And needless to say, Joe never invited me to a two-man mission since. But you know I had to redeem myself, even if it was three years later when I was in grade 10. It was a Saturday night, and me and Bob were looking for something to do. And I'm gonna keep it a stack with you, bro. I had no motion. Like, my Snapchat was drier than a Popeye's biscuit, bro. But lucky for me, Bob had a roster. And I'm talking an all-star lineup of girls who just want bob on their body and i don't blame them i mean shit i got bob on my body right now and you can too at chainsclub.shop that's right we got hoodies shirts beanies socks keychains stickers you name it and starting at the price of 420 bob can be all yours <laughs> or if you want me I, I wouldn't mind being on your keychain or something. <laughs> Treat me like white tea. So as I was saying, me and Bob were bored. So Bob hits up this girl named Avery like, what are you doing right now? And she's like, just chilling. Who you with? My friend Alice. Let's link. I'm with my homie. Okay, is he cute? cute as hell okay come over and i'm excited as fuck so we get bob's sister to drive us to avery's crib and as we pull up to her house i remember a crucial detail that i'd been forgetting this whole time i I was scared of the hoes, bruh. And as we walked up to her door, I was starting to get flashbacks of me and Joe's two man, where Joe tossed up an alley-oop for both of us, and I blocked his shot, metaphorically and literally. And as I'm psyching myself up, Bob calls Avery to tell her we're here, and she's like, so, uh, my, my parents are asleep, so you're gonna have to come in through my window. Shit. So we walk around the side of the house to Avery's room, and lucky for us, there's this big-ass window, and I'm like, yo, c can you open it so we can get in? And she's like, uh, uh, it, it is open. Bro, only this tiny ass rectangle in the top left was open at a 60 degree angle. But that was our only way in, so I helped Bob up and through the window. But now I gotta get up there, and I'm bigger than Bob, so I put my head through, and I'm trying to slowly creep into the room, and then I lean just a little too far, and I'm headed face first onto Alice's hardwood floor. And listen, Bob has come in clutch many times. He saved me from drowning, coyotes, getting in trouble, but out of all these things i'm most grateful for bob catch me as i fell through this fucking window because drowning and dying would have been pretty bad like boohoo rip chains you know what i'm saying but imagine falling through a window and eating shit face first in front of the hose like i would have preferred the drowning bro but after that close call I, I was a little flabbergasted you know what i'm saying but alice has the audacity to ask me this loaded ass question like oh hey wh what's your name uh me yeah you uh it it's a uh, the name's for real. Chains for real. Nice to meet you, Mr. For Real. I'm Alice. And so we all just started talking and shit, but I keep noticing Alice was getting a bunch of text messages. And I remember thinking it was probably her mom or something, so I shrugged that shit off, and I'm like, yo, we should watch a movie. Yeah, oh we my should. God, yeah. And I wasn't about to make the same mistake I made last time, so I found the most dog shit horror movie on the face of Netflix and threw that shit on. And man, that shit was ass. In fact, it was so ass that we, we just started cuddling and shit, like, what else was there to do? But now that we were close, I could feel the vibrations of Alice's phone getting a call. So she's like, one second, I'll be right back. And I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but I could low-key hear what she was saying through the door. I'm just at Avery's house.
We're, we're watching a movie. Oh my god. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay. But when she comes back, she puts a pillow between us. Like the same type of shit two dudes do to make sure they don't fuck in their sleep. And I'm trying to piece everything together. And as I'm coming to the conclusion that this girl has a boyfriend, I hear footsteps coming towards the door. And when the door opens, I'm fucking bamboozled to see a 60-year-old man who looks furious. And I'm just hoping this isn't Alice's boyfriend. Because if it is, we got bigger problems on our hands. But as I seen the way this man looked at Bob, I realized he's Avery's dad. And Bob Bob wasted no time jumping out that fucking window. But for me, let's just say that shit wasn't very elegant. Cause I got stuck for what felt like five minutes making eye contact with this grown ass man. Well, what are you, what are you trying to seduce my dad or something? Like, like get the fuck out. And I'm not gonna lie, we ran, bro. And once we made it home, me and Bob were relieved. But when I go to check my phone, I got a little notification on Snapchat. And I'm expecting it to be Alice or, or maybe even Team Snapchat or something. I don't know. But I sure as hell wasn't expecting it to be a motherfucker named Ryan Donaldson. And Ryan must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning because he's like, what the fuck did you do, dude? So I hit him back with a, who this? And he's like, Ryan Donaldson. Yeah, no, I can see your username, bruh. But I have no clue who you are. I'm Alice's boyfriend, bitch. And Ryan got his shit hit with an instant block, bro. And so the moral of the story is, if you're gonna hang out with a girl who has a boyfriend, turn off your snap maps, bro. Middle school is just an awkward place, bro. Like middle school dances, awkward. Middle school speeches, awkward. And middle school relationships, in my experience, is the most awkward thing on the face of this planet. I mean, the girl's a whole foot taller, got a deeper voice, and shit, she could probably bench more than you little bro like i hate to break it to you but you don't got a girlfriend you are the girlfriend bro middle school just occurs at the craziest time in a teenager's life because motherfuckers is just getting slapped by puberty out of nowhere you'll be walking down the halls and see a bunch of kids who look fresh out of daycare then all of a sudden you'll see a grown-ass man built like shaquille o'neal thumping his way down to math class and attendance in middle school was looking like matthew uh, uh, uh here george present daisy here uh owen here. dude's balls would be dropping halfway through presenting their speech like and this is specifically why dinosaur <coughs> why dino <coughs> Why dinosaurs went what extinct? The fuck? And in middle school, nobody had drip. Like, dudes would be showing up to school in a neon green t shirt paired with some bright red shoes looking like a fucking traffic light. Well, their haircuts looking like their barber cut their shit with one hand, well blindfolded. But to be fair, everyone had a shitty haircut in middle school, bro. And if you think your cut wasn't that bad in middle school, chances are your shit's probably still ass to this day. And just to make things worse, the cherry on top is that everybody has got acne. There's just all these hormones flying around and these kids have no clue what to do with them. Which is exactly why middle school beef is unmatched, bro. Motherfuckers will be throwing hands for no reason at all. And I don't know how, but somehow even the fights were awkward. It would be like, hey pal, I heard you sat beside my crush in class today. So what? You want to fight about it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> like if you wanted to. That, like, I'm, I'm not scared. Like, yeah, we, we can fight. Okay, let, let's freaking go, pussy. Fuck, I wasn't ready. So, sorry, was that too soon? No shit, Sherlock. Okay, you can hit me back so we're even. But if two dudes were throwing hands and their crush is watching... <laughs> They're about to fight to the death. But the thing is about middle school fights, I, I didn't know this was possible, but somehow both motherfuckers end up losing the fight. I remember one lunch at my middle school, a dude whipped out some boxing gloves for no reason at all, and all of a sudden we're running a whole fight club. Kids would be betting their lunch money on who's gonna win and shit, but we never laid down any ground rules. So one day, JJ hit Timmy with a spinning back fist and put his ass to sleep. And I'm hyped, because I just doubled my lunch money, but Mr. Principal didn't seem too hyped to see one of his students knocked out on the ground so of course jj gets in trouble because he's just that one kid who's always in trouble but never got expelled like i could have swore dude was on his third strike five strikes ago but man middle school had some characters bro there was that one guy that would walk through the halls blast the music on his speaker the kid who used to sit in his chair like this the dude who hit puberty and midlife at the same time uh mr donaldson can, can i get some help on the subtraction <laughs> Help on the subtraction? You look more like you need help on your taxes. <laughs> no, subtraction's just hard for me. During recess, do you go check on the wife and kids? No, I, I just play on the monkey bars. Tell me, how do you manage to be in middle school 
and work a nine to five job at the same time. <laughs> the girl who thinks she's a horse. The emo kid. Catch him in the back of the class with his hoodie tied up watching sad Bart Simpson edits. The kid who had to touch the top of the door frame before entering a room. Girls who have to bring their Starbucks cup everywhere. The dude who's constantly emoting. And in order to find the answer, we can make a grid. Did, did someone say gritty? Right foot creep. Ooh, walking with that heat. Of course, there's the kid who Naruto runs through the hallway. And then there's that weird ass kid who accidentally called his social studies teacher mom one time. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably an accident though <laughs> fuck and i have no idea why but there's something about teaching middle school that had all these teachers going through a midlife crisis i remember one day our science teacher was teaching us about rainbows Th does anyone know what a rainbow is yes Jaden. refraction of light through water droplets oh wow that's right how did you know that read it oh okay where did you read it read it yeah but where did you read it Reddit. Jaden, I can't do this right now. Just, just tell me where you found this information. R Reddit? God damn it, Jackson. You're the reason my children get their shit whooped every night. Now, I don't know what she had going on in her life, but the way she broke down talking about beating her children to a group of 12-year-olds really gave me the impression that she shouldn't be teaching middle schoolers, bro. And I don't know who was in charge of hiring these teachers, but I also had a deaf teacher, which, you know, is cool and all, but it, it did make it a little bit harder considering the fact that, uh, you know... She was the fucking music teacher, not to mention the fact that she was also half blind. And I think the idea there was that she could somehow feel the vibrations of the guitar or something, which didn't seem to work too well, considering the fact that I got a fucking A in music, and I can't play the guitar for shit, but I guess, uh, I guess I just, like, I smelled good or something? I don't know. And I don't know about y'all's experiences, but I feel like kids were just mad touchy in middle school. Like you'd be sitting in math class, minding your own business, then for no reason at all, a motherfucker would tase you in the side of the ribs. And I remember when kids first learned about these pressure points, it was all fun and games. Someone would just poke you in the ribs like, <laughs> pressure ah, point, <laughs> that tickles. Then there would be a new pressure point dropping every week. It got to the point where these 12 year olds were hitting pressure point combinations and paralyzing your legs and shit. Hey bro, let me let me try this new pressure point on you. Yeah, sure, go for it. Ah, it, it tickles. <laughs> And it was the same shit with this game. Like, you really couldn't trust anybody, bro. Yo, what's that on my legs? Shit. Got him. Oh, shit. There's a bug on you. God damn it. Dumbass. Oh, fuck. I just broke my leg. Bro, I'm not stupid. You didn't just break your leg. No, no, no. I'm serious, bro. I promise. On everything. On my entire life. I just broke my leg. Look. Bro, I remember I got punched so many times, my arm was on life support. It was about to fall off, like... Ah, uh, and thinking back to middle school, there's just so many things that make me cringe, bro. But by far the cringiest of them all is the relationships, man. And believe it or not, I had my fair share of middle school relationships. I remember one day I was sitting in class and this girl came up to me and said, Chains, uh, I, I have a crush on you. And that's really all it took to have a young Chains in love. Head over heels. We went to the movies together. We, we went to my house and watched movies. Uh... Well, we went to her house and uh, we also watched movies. N now that I think about it, all we really did was watch movies. We didn't really talk that much. I, I mean, I didn't really have a way with my words at the age of 12. <laughs> so, uh, did do you like movies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like movies too. Did that That's why we're here. Uh, at the movie theater. <laughs> I also like popcorn um, with the butter. It, it tastes, like I, I like how it tastes. And one day we went to the mall and I took a good look at my girlfriend of two weeks and thought, man, I don't even know this girl. Like, like, who are you? I remember we were inside Zoomies at the time and I said, hey, Jessica, um, you're a great person and all, but I don't really think we're compatible like that. Maybe Maybe we should just break up. Which was probably the most words I've strung together during the entirety of our relationship. And she says with the straightest face, oh. Okay. And then we proceeded to walk out of the mall and bus home together without saying a word. And I remember lying in my bed that night and thinking to myself, Damn, I, I think I'm supposed to be sad right now. So I threw on my hoodie, tied it up, and watched some sad Bart Simpson edits. We are currently facing a life-threatening epidemic that is threatening the lives of many teens around the world. Oh, what's that? Yeah. Okay, okay, uh, it, it has been brought to my attention that there's a new strain let loose that is infecting more teens than ever. The strain is propylene glycol formaldehyde. 
street name, Guava Ice. <clears throat> so stay safe out there, and back to you, Linda. What? Oh, oh shit! Man, way back when, somewhere in Timbuktu, a homo sapien found a plant by the name of tobacco, and for whatever reason, somewhere in this dude's caveman brain, he decided, Huh, me, smoke, now. And that he did. And as humans slowly evolved, smoking did too. And soon, motherfuckers went from looking all old and wise, smoking these big old pipes, to soon smoking cigars on some mafia boss shit which turned into cigarettes. Now back in the day, if you were stressing, Doc would prescribe you a pack of good old cigarettes. Sore throat? Cigarettes. Oh, you got a cough? Here, smoke a cigarette. But after a while, people's teeth started looking all British and shit, so they decided, boy, I don't think these are healthy, innit? So we decided we needed to make cigarettes better, and you know what makes everything better? The letter E. Your mail's taking too long to come in? Email. Wait, wait, what's that? You you want to play sports, but your ass at every single sport? Esports. Oh, you got daddy issues? E girl. So of course, when people realize cigarettes are killing them. E cigarettes. Man, one thing leads to another, and shit. You got yourself a vaporizer Gen Y GTX box mod with three USB charging ports, a speaker, and a six-inch LED touchscreen that can play Flappy Bird. Like vaping is just getting a little too advanced, bro. Like I remember one time I was chilling in the washroom with my homie Billy, and of course a motherfucker walks in with a vape. But this was no regular vape, no. This shit looked like a gadget straight out of fucking Star Wars. Yo, you wanna hit? Uh, uh, a hit? A, a hit of your iPhone? <laughs> iPhone? <laughs> this is that eSmoke FTX 763 3rd series, my boy. Watch this. Yo, did he just hotbox the whole bathroom in one hit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes the fuck I did. And this shit's 100, Nick. Holy shit, well, where did you find 100, Nick? Yeah, uh, I ended up mixing my 50, Nick guava juice with my 50, Nick blueberry ice, and it just kind of added up to 100. Bro, I, I don't think that's how it uh, works. Shut up, my mom's calling me. Yo, fuck you, mom. And that was the moment I realized there really is levels to this shit. Level one. Level one is the type of dude who isn't addicted, but he'll occasionally take a hit of somebody's device. But level two, bro's borderline addicted, but he's still in the denial phase. Bro, are you addicted to vaping? Addicted? Pfft, nah, nah, I don't even vape like that, bro. Shit. Do five jumping jacks right now. Bro, what? That, that's easy. One, two. Three, <coughs> four. <coughs> oh shit! Oh, the, the Level three, the fiend. This motherfucker is strapped up with some nicotine at all times, and even when he has a vape in his hand, this dude will ask for yours. And God forbid, if this fiend loses his vape. This motherfucker will be stressing like he just lost his only child. A fiend without a vape is the exact equivalent of one of these purple minions. Dude will be itching for that shit and lord knows what that man will do for a fix. Level 4, the fiend who sells vapes. At this point, this dude's whole life revolves around vapes. In fact, I'm pretty sure they don't even breathe oxygen anymore. Like in order to breathe, they need to inhale some chemicals that, that I can't even spell. Which on honestly, it doesn't even say that much. Like. I can't spell a lot of shit, but I I'm tr what I'm trying to say is their bodies have just fully adapted in order to consume as much nicotine as possible. They breed that shit, they drink the vape juice, and when they're hungry, shit, they just munch on the vape itself. And the worst part is they can't even run out of vapes. Like shit, they are the plug. This motherfucker's just the CEO of getting high on his own supply. Like dude is his own number one customer. Level five. This motherfucker, bro. Like why do you need a LED touchscreen on your vape bro like you already have a phone whoa wait, wait. did did you just order that pizza from your vape mm -hmm. shit Where, where'd you get this from and don't get me started on these flavors bro like tell me why these motherfuckers can make a vape juice and call that shit early riser and that shit literally tastes like a wednesday at 6 a.m like what the fuck type of ingredients mixed together to taste like a wednesday at 6 a.m but early riser isn't even the weirdest flavor on the market because if you're feeling the family dinner vibes you can get a rotisserie chicken flavor or if your breath is smelling nice and fresh you could fuck that shit up quick with some garlic flavor juice and they even got bacon yeah yeah i'm not gonna lie that shit sounds fire as fuck and lastly 
Now, I don't even know if I can say this on YouTube right now, but shit. You can even get yourself some Worcestershire. Wor- wor- Worcestershire. Wor- Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Sh- but regardless, I think we all know the home of nicotine. The eternal hot box. The communal vape sesh. It's the high school bathrooms, man. You walk into one of these joints and there's at least 15 dudes hotboxing that shit at like 10 a.m. You come in trying to take a piss and now you got a head rush. You you, you walk over to the urinals, but it's so goddamn hotbox, you start pissing all over the walls. But shit, you can't even piss on the walls in peace, man. You got that one fiend coming over to you trying to suck your device dry and dude's so down bad for that hit that that's not the only thing he'd suck dry. And listen, you may be thinking, Chains, uh, how do you know what you know about vaping? And that's a great question. Back in the day, I was a curious little George, man. And back in grade seven, I was chilling at my friend Becky's house. And when I walked into Becky's crib, I was nothing but an innocent, curious young man. But little did I know, I would leave Becky's crib far different than I entered. So you know, me, Bob, and Billy are posted in Becky's room, and I was sitting with Becky, so Becky asked me, have you ever hit a vape before? Hell no, I hadn't, but you know I had to play it cool around Becky, so I said, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, 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 I, I, I do that shit all the time. And so, of course, she passes me the vape. And honestly, I didn't think this far ahead, but I was in way too deep to come clean now, so I put that shit in my mouth, and I sucked the fuck out of it, pause. And because this was the first time anything had made contact with my lungs beside oxygen, my lungs started malfunctioning and I was coughing up a storm and my cool guy cover was blown, but I, I had to see it through. Oh my God, are you okay? <coughs> this shit ain't nothing for a guy like me. Guys, guys, I, I think is dying. And as I went on with my life, I would hit a device here and there and eventually I even learned some tricks and shit. But one day, me and my my homie had to run to catch a bus and so we start running but the homie doesn't even make it a hundred meters and he starts rolling on the floor coughing up blood and i was like yeah no yeah yep yeah no no fuck that and you know i haven't touched a vape ever since man so stay safe and breathe air for real man you could be the 47th president of the united states and you'd still get flamed in school it's just inevitable it could be your haircut your clothes and bro even when there's nothing to roast somebody's gonna try and spit out some bullshit anyways hey yo why does carl's face look like spider-man's left nut yo it's <laughs> so true <laughs> why do you know what his nuts look like and bro when i was in middle school all my clothes were hand-me-downs i got from my neighbor and this motherfucker just didn't want to see me win bro because i was getting piles of v-neck shirts and jeans that didn't even fit and not only did my neighbor have no drip but dude was 10 years older than me so every fit i made was just a decade too late and pulling up to school and that shit had me feeling like a rotisserie chicken the way i was getting cooked at a 360 degree angle bro but my fit wasn't even the only thing that was outdated because my phone looked like the first phone ever created and it acted like it too i mean i would have to click the screen five times and then send a a prayer to the heavens just to turn that shit on and only real g's know the pain of having to whip out an old ass phone around someone else like i remember this one time a girl came up to me and asked if she could add me on snapchat and when i gave her my phone my shit crashed bro uh i think your phone just ran out of battery oh no <laughs> don't worry sometimes you just gotta yeah, here you go. Uh, actually, I have a boyfriend, so... Wait, I'm wait, gonna... wait, no, wait, wait, I'm wait, what gonna... the fuck? And ever since that day, that phone was my number one op, bro. So much so that the next time a girl came up and asked for my Snapchat, I, st I started fucking malfunctioning, bro. Hey, c can I get your Snapchat? Uh, uh no. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh uh, no no no! It's just it's just cause uh I don't have Snapchat. Oh well, what what about your phone number? I actually don't even have a phone. You don't have a phone? Oh well, well I, d I did, but th then my dog ate it. You know? Oh my what I'm god! Saying? Is your dog okay? Uh, sorry, I I don't even have a dog. I don't I don't have one. Then uh uh who ate your phone? Uh, fucking <laughs> I did. Ah. <laughs> uh... Wait, was that? Nope. Like, I do appreciate all the hand-me-downs, because without them, I would be walking through the school butt-booty naked. But to be honest with you, if it was a choice, I would have rather been butt-booty naked. Because these v-necks were straight girl repellent. Like, there's birth control, there's condoms, and then there's v-necks, bruh. But shit, I, I mean, you could still pull a lot while wearing a v-neck, but it's just like... 
It's just gonna be dudes. And just when you think I couldn't have been more roastable, my mom will be like, oh, sweetie, you need a haircut. No, 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 please, mom, no, no, no. My mom used to take me to this shop that gave out $1 haircuts, bro. And these motherfuckers were straight speed running these cuts. They'd be asking what kind of cut you want while cutting your hair. And by the time you get to show them the cut you want, your shit is already done, bro. And my mom must have not been tipping them either, considering the fact that every time I went back, the cuts kept getting worse and worse. Until one time, I walked out there with my head bleeding like I asked for a two on the sides, and she hit me with a negative two. Now, don't get me wrong. When I pulled up to school, wearing the most abominable fit known to man with the atrocious haircut and shitter phone combo i got my shit roasted flamed grilled sauteed deep fried and then thrown into the goddamn microwave like the type of flaming that has you going home and just taking an extensive look in the mirror questioning if you should legally change your name to albert and flee the country. But somehow, this motherfucker Carl got flamed even harder than me just for being Carl. Like, whenever a friend group is created, there's just one dude selected to be the punching bag for the entire group. And you know, I feel bad and shit, but like... It's better Carl than me, bro, so I'ma slip a few jabs in if I have to. Yo, what the fuck is Carl eating, bro? Oh, oh, hell no. Nah. Wait, whoa, 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 Chains is eating the exact same thing. Nah, what? <laughs> Your shit looks like it tastes like cardboard with honey mustard. <laughs> wow, how did you know? <laughs> like, Carl can't even get a little chuckle out without getting crucified, bro. Damn, he's fucking that shit up. Looks like he hasn't eaten <laughs> in weeks, bro. <laughs> Oh, hell no, nah, Carl. I know you're not laughing. Yeah, n n I'm not. You're built like SpongeBob brown pants. You, you look like a malnourished Santa Claus, bro. Like, god damn, that's a face only a mother can love. W what did I do? Now, getting roasted around your boys is tough, but that pales in comparison to the pain and embarrassment of getting roasted in front of your crush, bro. Yo, Chains, what did you get on the science test? I I'm not gonna lie, I got like a 76. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not smarter with that big-ass head of yours. Yeah, <laughs> good one, Joe. No, like, for real, your shit is massive. Well, like, the sheer amount of brain you could fit in that bitch should make you Einstein. You look like you should be pulling 10,000 IQ plays right now. You look like you got the solution to world hunger somewhere hidden in that big-ass noggin. Like, like, how do you even stand up straight with that absolute cranium for a head. But I remember this one time I got my shit flamed so hard in front of an entire audience that I was brought to tears. But I, I mean, I was six. I was six years old. And the day was December 24th, Christmas Eve. So my mom brought me and my brother to this improv play. And as we sat and waited for the show to begin, this little elf walked up to us like, hey, do, do you guys want to be a part of the show? Yeah, let, let's uh, do it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And once the show began, they called me and my brother up to the stage and asked us a very simple question. So, uh, what do you guys want for Christmas? Oh, I want a Minecraft sword and a creeper stuffy. And, uh, well, what about you, little man? And as I looked into that crowd with dead silence, my brain stopped braining, bro. Hey, uh, don't worry, it can be anything. Um, ah, uh, shit. Uh, I want, um, um, just kid, what do you want? I want, uh, Man, I, 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 I wanna. Stage, I don't really know bro. what I want. Yo, who brought this fucking dumbass on stage, bro? Get the fuck out of here. Now, now I'm paraphrasing. I mean, I was six. I don't remember exactly what he said, but that's what it felt like. And as we walked back to our seats, I was super embarrassed. But as the show started, it was actually pretty funny, and people had probably forgot about it by now. But 10 minutes into the show, a character walks on stage with some goofy ass buck. Teeth. Yo, this guy looks stupid as hell. <laughs> oh shit. And this dude proceeds to absolutely cook six-year-old me with no remorse. Hey, what's your name? Um, uh, I, I don't know. What? Uh, okay, uh, how's your day? D day? D day? What, what the fuck is a day? I don't know. Well, well what do you know? No. No, that's just it. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Shit, I don't think I know anything. And that shit had the whole audience laughing harder than ever. And as I looked around, my brother was laughing and even my mom was laughing. And it was this very moment that I had hit rock bottom. 
And at the age of six, I realized I would be put on this earth simply to suffer. And and it made me cry, bro. I cried in the middle of this theater. And the next morning I woke up and it was Christmas. And under the Christmas tree, I saw the best gift of all. It was a Bob Pocket tee from Chains Club Doll Shop. That's right, it's brand new. You could wear it around your homies. You could wear it at school. You could wear it around your mom, your grandma, your great grandma, maybe not your great grandma, but damn near anywhere else. And Bob will be posted in your pocket the whole time. Wow, what a perfect thing to get someone for Christmas, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'm right. There's a lot of things in life that I don't really understand. But if there's one thing I can truly comprehend, it's being grounded. Because in my time, I've served a total of 547 days and 16 hours in the slammer. And through a year and a half of extensive first-hand research, I've come to the professional conclusion that getting grounded is straight ass, bro. You're locked in your room with no phone, no computer. Like, what do you want me to do? Think about my actions? <laughs> Hell nah. Being grounded had a young me doing the stupidest shit ever, bro. Like, I was popping handstands, hitting my head against the wall, playing with the door stopper thingy. Shit, I got so bored, I even read a few pages of a book like an absolute nerd. And now that I think about it, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth was actually a spectacular read. Now listen, there's only one thing worse than being grounded, and that's being falsely imprisoned for life. Well, now that I think about it, there's a lot of things worse than being grounded, but, but one of which is being grounded during summer, bro. There's something about being able to hear all the happy children, the ice cream trucks, your homies having fun, the hoes throwing rocks at your window asking you to come outside, or you just cry yourself to sleep because there never was any hoes throwing rocks at your window asking you to come outside. It's just you, your Percy Jackson books, some used toilet paper, and the existential thoughts in your head questioning if it's even worth it. And listen, I'm sure everyone can pick up on the fact that I'm a really intelligent dude. Smart all around, really, but trust me when I say, I wasn't always this smart, bro. In fact, in kindergarten, my dumbass fully believed with my whole heart that being grounded meant your parents would just dig a decent-sized hole in your backyard, toss you in, and bury you alive for the time being. And so I'm sure you could imagine my surprise when my OG friend of five days said, yeah, I got grounded for two whole weeks. Holy fucking shit balls, dude. Are you okay? No, man. It's really hard. I, I didn't get to touch any of my toys or anything. Damn. How long ago was that, man? Oh, I'm still grounded. What? No, you're not. Yeah, dude. I'm grounded right now. No the fuck you're not. And I wouldn't truly find out what being grounded was until seven years later. I was in grade seven. It was a beautiful sunny summer day at approximately 11 a.m. And me and the boys were freely roaming our city. Little did I know we wouldn't be free for long. And as the boys and I roamed the city looking for a move, one of Bob's girls calls him up and is like, okay, so my friend Becky is in Hawaii for a few days with her family, and she said I could bring you over. And just like that, Bob could have wrapped it up and claimed some cheeks. But the boy Bob was never one to leave the homies behind. So not only did he convince his girl to let us come, but he went above and beyond. He got his girl to bring some of her friends over too. And now we're hyped because we had now located the move and quite a marvelous move if I do say so myself. Now keep in mind, all of us knew Becky and had been to Becky's house many times before, but Becky was all the way in Hawaii, so she had no clue about the marvelous move about to take place at her own crib. But regardless, me and the homies walk into Becky's crib and they low-key got a little get-together in the works. I see Bob's girl, I see Bob's girl's friends, and then I see a mutual friend of mine named Dennis and he brought his girl. Now a little backstory about Dennis. Dennis was two years older than me, making him in high school. And to be fair, from grade seven to high school is a colossal difference. Dennis was taller, had a more developed frame, and Dennis even had some facial hair in progress. The amount of facial hair that put my peach fuzz to shame. And to put it quite simply, 
Dennis was a menace. But regardless, that's my homie's homie, so I walk up and dap him up. And then everyone heads over to Becky's room. Now keep in mind, Becky had simply invited Bob and Bob's girl to come over, and somehow we ended up being eight people deep in that joint. And so that means technically, the other six of us were straight trespassing. So we were all chilling in Becky's room, chopping it up for a good hour and a half, until eventually, people start exploring her house. Now in Becky's room, it was just me, Bob, Bob's girl, girl and Bob's girl's friend named Lily. And so we're all just talking until I hear someone yell from the room down the hall. Yo, Chains, get in here right now. And I don't know exactly what I was expecting to see as I walked into that bathroom, but it was absolutely not seeing Dennis drop a condom filled with water on Billy's head. And of course I laugh because th that's, that's comedy gold right there. But it also made me realize maybe we shouldn't be here dropping condoms on each other's heads. But who was I to tell Dennis what to do? He had facial hair, so he was practically a grown man to my standards. So I just turned around, went back to the room, and continued chilling with Bob. And as we talked, the music progressively got louder, and Dennis progressively became more of a menace. And it had got to the point where the speakers were booming, and Dennis was lobbing condom water balloons off Becky's balcony. And then one time, Dennis either almost hit or just missed Becky's neighbor with one of these condom water balloons. So this grown man looks down at a condom that seems to have fell from the heavens. Then he looks up and sees Dennis scrambling inside the Becky's crib with the speakers blasting music. And then he continued on his way. And we were all just having a fantastic time in Becky's room until we hear the downstairs door swing open. And we all absolutely shit our pants and run onto the balcony. Hey. I just texted the family who lives here and they said no one is supposed to be in the house. Everyone needs to leave right now or I'm calling the cops. And that's exactly what we did. No messing around, we were out that hoe. And we all went to Bob's girl's house for an emergency meeting because we were all scared as fuck. And now Bob's girl and Becky are texting and Becky's like, my parents are pissed. They want to talk to everyone's parents and they know how many people were there. So we all devise a foolproof plan. Okay, we give Becky our phone numbers, tell it's our parents phone numbers and we act super disappointed in our children we all agreed on this plan and the emergency meeting was dismissed and over the next few days we all got texts from a very unhappy becky's father who made sure to specify the amount of condoms that were found in the bathtub we all respond with some bullshit along the lines of hello mr beckerson i'm very sorry to hear about the inconsiderate acts of chains and how he's invaded your home Rest assured, Chains will feel the wrath of this thick leather belt as it repeatedly beats against his cheeks to discipline him for his heinous actions. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. But come to find out, Lily's dumbass responded with some shit like, Dear Mr. Beckerson, thank you for letting me know, but Lily did nothing wrong as she didn't know she wasn't allowed there. Plus, she didn't even make a mess or anything on God. Put some respect on my daughter's name. Period. And just like that, our foolproof plan got fucked. And Becky's father texted each of us saying, You are coming to the house at 3.15pm today or I'm calling the cops. And shit, looking back, Becky's father was most definitely bluffing. Like, say I didn't go, what was he gonna tell the cops? 911, what's your emergency? Hey, uh, there, there was eight kids who invaded my home three days ago. Okay, sir, did they break in? No, uh... Well, no, no, no my, my daughter, my daughter gave them the key. Sir, why the fuck are you calling 911? There, there, there was condoms in the bathtub. But like I said, I wasn't very smart and I didn't have the brain capacity to think that far ahead. So everyone shows up to the house and Becky's father sits us down and makes each of us individually call our parents and explain what we had done. And I went first. Hey, mom, uh, so... I went to Becky's house the other day, but she was in Hawaii and I, I wasn't really invited. And there, there, there was condoms in the bathtub. Needless to say, we all got our shit whooped and I received my very first grounding with the sentence of one month in the slammer. Man, there's a lot of questionable places on earth like the Bermuda Triangle or Area 51 or even this place. 
but none of these places can compare to the questionability of high school. And so inevitably, there's some weird ass kids in that joint. Like you gotta be careful who you talk to, bro, cause you approach the wrong student and shit. You're getting cussed out by a pack of hyenas in social studies class. And usually I never care what other people do. Like you do you, you know what I'm saying? But when I gotta sit through that shit for six hours a day, five days a week, shit, can you stop doing you for like five minutes, bro? And speaking of annoying kids, there's always that one kid in class who's constantly gargling on the teacher's meat. Like, we'll be finishing up the last class on a Friday, and of course the teacher's pet's gotta say some shit like, M Mr. Cumminson, is there no homework for us to complete over the weekend? Oh, well, 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 no, uh, believe it or not, I'd rather not spend my weekend marking your shitty ass little essays. So. But don't worry, Mr. Cumminson, I can help you mark essays all weekend long. Whoa, 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 I isn't that against school policy? Well, what's against school policy? Riding Mr. Cumminson's dick with no license? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not allowed to swear. And of course the class clown. And man, I really just gotta commend him for his work. Like, it's not an easy job being the class clown. Dude throughout his entire GPA, future, and probably got his shit whooped on multiple occasions just to keep the class entertained. Like, I'll be rotting in English class, about to fall asleep, until the class clown starts cooking the teacher for no apparent reason. And next, we're looking at adjectives. Uh, does anyone have any good examples? Yeah, uh, Jason. Uh, bald as shit. Oh, well, shit. no, that, that's actually three words. No, 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 I wasn't even using an example. You're just so goddamn bald, Yo, it's distracting. God hey, damn. you know what they say. The more hair I lose, the more head I get. Stop <laughs> <cat>. <laughs> No, 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 I don't think that's true, Mr. Clean, because you got more hair than you got hoes, and that says a lot with your Caillou looking <laughs> ass. Yo. Just go to detention, man. And you know we got the Redditor, bro. Now, don't be deceived. Redditors can come in all shapes and sizes, uh, especially the extra large size and uh, and even the extra extra large size. But regardless, they all have the same programming encoded into their brains. They're either talking about a video game or they're quoting a meme, bro. And I got a little piece of advice to any Redditors out there. I don't care how funny that shit may be in your head. If you have to verbally describe what a meme looks like, for your sake, just don't say it, bro. Because I promise you that joke will not not hit and next up we got darren presenting a slideshow on 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 why elon musk is is poggers uh yeah uh wh whenever you're ready me standing in front of the class waiting to present <laughs> you know that meme where mike wazowski is standing there in an awkward fashion with his his hands by his side and he's got like two eyes <laughs> Now there really is levels to being a redditor. And don't get me wrong, they're not all that bad, but the ones that got that I paused my game to be here T paired up with the beer belly neck beard combo. <laughs> That shit is lethal. And if you press E to interact with one of these bad boys, you'll get stuck in an endless time loop hearing about Among Us memes and hentai. Now the band kids are like the Redditor's second cousin. Like, like it's all the same shit, but, but bro just knows how to play a tuba. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum, we got the dudes who touch grass. The athletes. Now I feel like these dudes got a bad reputation when it comes to the jock stereotypes from the movies. Because the ratio of athletes shoving nerds in lockers is, is probably like 1 in 75. And the one was, was most likely just having a bad day. Speaking of bad days, getting shoved in a locker really has a way of ruining your day. And you really gotta feel bad for the nerds who have to endure this type of harassment every single day. Well actually, it's only every other Tuesday after their football practice. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to be shoved in a locker at all you you shouldn't have to be that's grammatically incorrect it's actually supposed Man, to be you shouldn't shut be. up there's really just three types of smart people the first dude you wouldn't even be able to tell bro's smart because he's just lazy as fuck he'd be acing every test using one percent of his brain power like he's got that elon musk potential but shit he just doesn't really feel like being a billionaire today or on the other hand we got the weirdly political and argumentative smart dude this guy used up all his iq points on logic and reasoning and completely forgot to upgrade his social awareness because this is the kind of guy that everyone mutually agrees is just annoying as fuck like you can't do shit around this dude without him trying to start an argument yo chains you think i sink this half court shot <laughs> Bro, there is no chance you make that shit. Bu -bu -bu -bu. You are incorrect. No chance implies that statistically there is a 0% chance that it goes in, which is wrong as others have made this exact shot before Billy. <gasps> 
Truthfully, there's a chance for just about anything to happen, even though the chances may be slim. Well, that's cap, because there's no chance for you, bro. N no chance for me to what? You gotta be more specific. For, for you, you to, to get, get some bitches. And some people are just smart, and they still have the ability to be a normal functioning member of society. A lot of these people are chill as fuck. Like, they can teach you shit you don't understand, carry you in group projects, and if they're goaded, they can just bless you with the homework. And this is not the same as getting your homework from the class clown or the athlete because this shit is actually correct and next we got the other dudes who touch grass the stoners <laughs> Why are you looking at me? There's always a dude posted up in the back of the class who's visually fried as fuck. You'll commonly see him posted up with a snack of some sort and you know they never forget the Bev. Now you don't want this dude's homework because I promise you we will just have a bunch of doodles with some mushrooms and this graffiti S and somehow these motherfuckers will manage to take a multiple choice test and get every answer wrong like it's actually kind of impressive when you think about it but besides that they're just cool people but i'm not gonna lie i can't really say the same about the hot cheeto girls bro like these girls put in an effort to be as loud as possible like lord forbid if one of these girls breaks one of their long ass nails it doesn't matter if you sit on the opposite side of the class you're gonna hear about it you're also gonna hear them chewing those hot cheetos because they be lip smacking like crazy speaking of smacking there's always that that one kid in school who simply enjoys smacking motherfuckers and at my school it was jordan johnson and if you see my high school fights video that's why you don't Damn. mess with me yo. i'm jordan johnson or my high school dances video I'm Jordan Johnson. You would know. Jordan Johnson keeps a solid ass record. But it's at the point where bros fought so many people that nobody really even fucks with them. Because now it's like either you fought Jordan Johnson or your homies fought Jordan Johnson. And either way, it's fuck Jordan Johnson. But all bias aside, you just got to appreciate the top tier high value entertainment that JJ brings to the school. Like after a long day of calculus and chemistry, there's nothing like watching a dude get Batista the bombed in front of the whole school and speaking of the whole school 75 percent of the whole school are straight npcs and there's nothing wrong with it it is what it is because honestly i love you for that I couldn't be happier to share the school with you, my man. Because I'm not going to lie. I don't think I would survive a school without NPCs. The sheer amount of Redditors, Hot Cheeto Girls, and Teachers Pets. <sighs> fuck. I'd rather be homeschooled at that point. But all jokes aside, man. Every student plays a crucial part of the high school experience. So remember to appreciate everyone. Man, the very moment my stickman lips graze the tip of that sweet, sweet Zaza, it's wraps for all the food in the fridge. And as soon as that THC tickles my brain, it's GG's. The food in my closet is already consumed, bruh. And shit, when I run out of food in the crib, I give my condolences to the local McDonald's workers. Because, man, I'm about to have those motherfuckers working overtime. Now, listen, man. Shout out to all my big homies out there. But I'm going to make it clear real quick that I am not one of y'all. In fact, I make sure that I am precisely 64 pixels wide at all times. However, I will say mentally and in my heart, I am a little bit of an EDP 445. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I like food. What I was trying to say is that I like food, and uh, usually I can resist food, but once that devil's lettuce gets a hold of my brain, I become a certified fat ass. I'm talking 750 pixels wide at least. I'm eating anything in sight, and as soon as I run out of food, I go to a new site and eat everything in sight again. And honestly, this shit is becoming a problem, bro. No shit, buddy. Your arteries are clogging. Yeah, yeah. And your blood pressure is through the roof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that too. And you're developing type 7 diabetes. Whoa, 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 type 7? I thought there was only two types. There was, until your fat ass decided to eat 87 ice cream sandwiches. How the fuck do you stomach 87 ice cream sandwiches? Anyways, man, the munchies are lit, bro, because it's the only time you can truly taste each individual atom as it hits your tongue. Like, eating some good food well high is like a meditation, bro. Like, when you're zooted, munching on some Doritos, and you start closing your eyes, shit, you might just fuck around and become the Dorito. Now, this happens to me on a routinely basis, and as heavenly as that experience is... 
I must warn you, when you come out of your Dorito coma, you will be at least five bags deep in that motherfucker, and your hands may never be the same. Man, I'm still trying to recover to this day. Yeah, my Doritos still taste like fingers, bro. And if staining my fingers orange and developing a new type of diabetes sounds bad, my munchies addiction gets worse, bro. Because when you combine the zooted desire for food with the distorted judgment of the baked brain, shit, that's the perfect equation to put me into crippling debt. Especially back in the day, because as a youngin', the only thing I was cooking was my brain cells, bro. So that meant I had to buy food. And to put it into simpleton terms, well, I was broke as shit. I remember one hot sunny day, me and the boys were chilling at a carnival with some of our other boys, and one of those boys whips out his dat pen. And so of course everyone flocks around that dude and chiefs the fuck out of his dat pen, and 15 minutes later, that shit hit. But you know what hit even harder? The goddamn munchies. And so there I was, walking around the carnival, absolutely blasted with $50 to my name, looking for something to eat. And don't get me wrong, the carnival had lots of options, but they were really taxing out here. And for a dude with 50 bones to his name, I needed to find the most bang for my buck. And there I saw it. It, it was beautiful. A pink ice cream truck glistening in the summer sun. So you know I had to hop in line. And as I'm waiting in this line, the dude in front of me turns around and he's like, damn, bro, you look high as giraffe balls, dude. What? Uh, me? Nah, nah, what? Me? No. Hey, hey, don't worry, dude. <laughs> I am too. Oh, shit. So me and my newfound homie are just chopping it up, talking about how sensational this ice cream is about to be, and soon enough, it was the homie's turn to order. Yo, dude, le let me borrow one of those cookie dough ice cream cones. All righty, here you go. That'll be 12 bucks. <laughs> Twelve dollars, bro. That that's like half my net worth. Trust me, it's worth it, dude. Yo, let me get a a, a cookie, cookie, uh, cookie cone. All right, cookies and cream. Here you go. And as I licked that thing, man, that shit was sensational as fuck. But as I turned around, I seen the baked homie step into a pothole and absolutely fumble his ice cream cone. And I'm not gonna lie. That was some of the saddest shit I ever seen. So I go walk over to give him some of mine. Hey man, you, you want some cookies and cream? Oh shit, thank you man. Bro, did you just drop both of our $12 ice cream cones? Fuck. Then we were back in line like nothing ever happened. But man, waiting in that sun, my mouth was parched and my eyes were dry. And by the time we made it to the end of the line, I was looking like dried up SpongeBob, bro. Hey, it's you again. Can I get the, the cookie cone, the cookie cone, the cream, the one with the cream? Yeah. And at last, after dropping half my net worth on ice cream, I took a big bite of that ice cream cone and man, I felt every sugar granule, every atom, every proton and electron contained within that bite. And for the time being, the munchies were cured. Aw, can I pet your dog? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Aw, uh, what's your name, little guy? H his name's Ben. Ben. Aw, he he's so cute. I just, I I just wanna, I I just wanna punt that motherfucker. Man, these intrusive thoughts I be having make me wonder whether I belong in maximum security prison or not. Like, I don't even mean to, but the thoughts that pop into my head are so menacing that I can't even say this shit on YouTube. Or this video will get taken down. Then I'll be cancelled. Then my whole channel will get deleted. Then I'll be thrown into a psych ward. And then I'll be put on the fucking death penalty. Like, these thoughts that pop into my head are so alarming that they make me want to beat my own ass, bro. Hey, man, uh... Well, Why'd you just sock yourself in the face? Oh, well, well, you see, I was about to push that unsuspecting toddler into the deep end for no apparent reason, so... <laughs> Yo, this guy's about to assault a minor. Hey, you can't do All that. Right, well, back. But it's not like every single intrusive thought I have is bad enough to get me convicted. Like, whenever I'm walking across a bridge, I have to use every cell in my body to fight the urge of just tossing my phone into the water. Like, there is literally no benefit from doing that shit, but there's just something inside of me that would feel so much 
satisfaction with just seeing my phone dissipate into the water. You know, maybe you get that urge because it would just be satisfying to do some shit that's out of the box. Some shit that nobody else would do just to just to break the simulation a little bit. Because I could be having the best day of my life. I could wake up, get the meanest pump in, hop in the shower, eat the most fire breakfast, and draw the most pristine stick men I've ever drawn. But as I'm casually walking beside a bunch of cars that are going 65 miles an hour, I'm still gonna have the urge to just throw myself in front of a car, bro. And it's not even on some emo shit. Like, I want to live but i also want to dive into some oncoming traffic but at least i'm not the only one who does this like you like other people do this uh, right L like it's normal right but half the time an intrusive thought will just be to do some goofy shit like you're just forced to imagine the consequences of what it would look like to start throwing it back on a tuesday at 2 41 p.m and every once in a while you'll just be chilling and you'll witness a motherfucker fall to the intrusive urges what are you get oh, off the table no. bro shit he let the intrusive thoughts win man now i don't even know if these count as intrusive thoughts or not but as a dude when i'm walking down the street i'll just be going on with my day chilling then all of a sudden i see a car and i'm like if i don't make it to that tree before this car i'm gonna die ah <laughs> oh, shit honestly these kinds of intrusive thoughts are are kind of motivating like it's the same thing as having a hype man at the gym except instead of that positive reinforcement if you don't get those three extra reps you're gonna die it's like whenever i'm at the gym hitting those bulgarian split squats i'd be having mental wars with myself Oof, that was a good set, man. I think we're done. Five more reps or you're a bitch. Damn, good shit. All right, I think we could wrap it up. Ten more, pussy. Who the fuck's gonna carry the boats? I told you we should have stopped, bro. Fifteen more or you like dick. Now that I think about it, there's a good amount of people in prison right now who just succumb to their intrusive thoughts. Because intrusive thoughts are just like that demon on your shoulder telling you to do the most devious shit possible. And I know there's a bunch of motherfuckers out there who just listen to that little guy. Hey, man, you see that lovely old lady right there? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna hit her with a mean right hook. Hmm, huh. well, well, what's in it for me? Nothing. Shit, all right. But to be honest, there is a handful of times where I've let the intrusive thoughts take over. One of the most memorable was way back when I was five years old. Me and my older brother were just dicking around, doing some five-year-old shit. Keep in mind, this story takes place before your boy had even developed consciousness. So I was just a little munchkin doing munchkin shit. Then suddenly, this urge came over me. It was unlike anything I'd ever felt before. It was dark irresistible and for no apparent reason i bit my brother's arm and this was probably the most satisfied i'd ever felt in my entire life but it was followed by shame and regret because i had no excuse ow why, why the fuck did your dumbass just bite me bro um i I felt like it. And one of my lowest IQ moments of all time took place when I was in grade eight. It was goddamn sewing class, bro. And I remember I was having a particularly miserable day. So I was just going through the motions. We were all gathered around this big table with our sewing machines, some fabric, and some scissors. I remember I was working on some shitty little big chunky stuffy. But on this particular day, the sewing machine cable was looking was looking mad thick and juicy and like i said i was having a bad day which is exactly why the intrusive thoughts decided to catch me at my worst psst, psst, do it what to, to, to do what oh you know what to do you're the one with the scissors in your hand buddy H how did these even get in my hand now cut it cut it chains no wh wh why the fuck would i the wire exploded with smoke and my heart dropped so fast bro and everyone around the table just stares me down and i'm thinking i can somehow cover this shit up like i didn't just take some fucking scissors and snip that shit like an umbilical cord maybe i could convince the teacher the cord snipped itself or some shit but as i look down at the scissors in my hand there's literally a chunk missing from the scissors they look like they survived world war ii but barely. The scissors are all charred up and shit. And just like that, my plan of convincing her I didn't cut it 
went out the fucking window. You take one look at the cord, one look at the scissors, and one look at my dumbass face, and you could piece together exactly what happened. So my sewing teacher walks over looking pissed as hell, and she tells me to go sit in the corner. So I take my charred scissors and sit in the corner like I'm a five-year-old, but to be fair, I made a five-year-old decision like I was in grade eight. I was 14, bruh. What kind of 14-year-old cuts the cord to a sewing machine because he felt like it? Like if my 14-year-old son did some shit like that, I would tell the kid I'm going to get some milk and I'm calling it quits. I would have to have another kid and try it all over again because that kid is going nowhere in life, man. So as I'm sitting in the corner realizing I'm a disappointment, it was one of those moments where you fucked up so bad you don't even feel any emotions i was just sitting there straight faced like well fuck me it was really one of those moments where you just you, you just want to stop existing so after the class ended the teacher came over to me and she said chains why the fuck did you cut the cord of the sewing machine no miss sewingson you, you gotta hear me out okay this better be good chains I was looking mad juicy and the scissors just teleported into my hands. I don't, I don't even know. You did what? Ah, mom, it, it was the intrusive thoughts that, that they told me to do. Oh, I'm about to intrude that ass. The fuck? There's a lot of awkward things in life, like the handshake fist bump dilemma, or waving back to someone who is waving to the dude behind you, or the you too situation. Enjoy your meal, sir. Thanks, you too. Actually, wait, 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 no, 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 no. But on this long list of things that will keep you up at night, I feel like school dances lands itself in the top three, bro. Cause it's like, is it a party or is it a school event? Are, are we hitting the Dougie or are we just standing awkwardly in the corner? There's just too many questions, bro. Like another question, who the fuck hired this guy to be the DJ? Like, I don't know how much they pay this dude, but it can't be anything over 50 bucks. I remember at my first middle school dance, I seen the DJ walk in with all his gear and shit and I thought, damn, look at those big ass speakers this dude knows what he's doing for sure hey hey stick man middle are we ready to turn up yeah, yeah. Let's go. one two a oh, one two three let's go so I walk over there to give bro some song requests that he so desperately needs and as I walk up to this dude's expensive ass setup, I look down at his laptop and this motherfucker's on Spotify and he, he's moving around the volume slider like he's doing some shit. Like bro, I could have done this shit for free. Nah, trust me bro, I know what I'm doing dude. Want a break from the ads? Now, to be honest, it was really the middle school dances that had me fucked up. Like, you took a bunch of self-conscious, prepubescent little kids and threw on some music and told them to dance with each other. Like, shit, of course they're gonna start hitting those Fortnite emotes, bro. That's all they know how to do. Like, these grade sixes are fresh out of elementary school. There's no way you'll catch one of these youngins asking a girl to dance. Like, they're still scared of catching cooties, bro. Or what about the grade sevens? These kids were straight menaces. Like, I remember at my grade seven, dance there was a duo we'll call them we'll call them greg and roderick greg and roderick would run up on some unsuspecting students and greg would slide behind them on his hands and knees and roderick would casually strike up a conversation and just when the poor guy was expecting at least roderick would shove his ass causing the unsuspecting victim to trip and eat shit and they went around to damn near everyone pulling this shit until one time they messed with the wrong dude <laughs> hey bro it's just a prank now grade eight these boys are damn near in high school. They don't dance. It it'll ruin their street cred, bruh. Instead, they prefer mosh pits. Rap, EDM, fucking smooth jazz. It doesn't matter what song. These grade eights will be relentlessly jumping up and down for no apparent reason. And soon, these grade eights will turn into freshmen. All that street cred they once had, gone. If you push one of these freshmen into the middle of a dance circle, he'll stress so hard, he'll start malfunctioning and hit those fucking Fortnite dances again. Now, grade 10s. Most of these grade 10s are a little self-conscious, but if you throw one of them into the dance circles... Let's go, Michael. Whoa, let's see yeah, it. Michael. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, what? I don't know how to dance. dance Michael. Do let's go, Michael. Fuck. Well, I guess I can bust out a few dance moves. All of a sudden, dudes got moves like Jagger. Come to find out, bro's been practicing him for this moment in his room for months so once these grade 10s soon become sophomores those youtube tutorials start paying off for real and if they're lucky they might even catch some cooties bro and these seniors 
just simply don't give a fuck. Bro, watch this. I'm about to hit the worm. What? You, you know how to hit the worm? <laughs> no. Damn. And I'm not done flaming this fucking DJ. Like, this dude be leaving my balls more blue than Squidward. Pause. These bitches lost. Oh, oh, hell. It, is that lo-fi? And then out of nowhere, really quick, the DJ will throw on some heat. And it'll have everybody turning up. But just as fast as Pop Smoke got that shit jumping, Ed Sheeran shut that bitch right back down. Like, mixing drill with the shape of you has to be some sort of felony, bro. Like, like tell me this dude deserves to roam the streets freely after pulling some shit like that. In fact, funny story. I, I had seen the DJ after the dance in the parking lot one time. And um, we walked up and uh, we jumped the fuck out of him all right but not all djs were out here committing war crimes on my ears like you know the dj was on to some shit when he got the students and the teachers turning up like you play the right song and these teachers will forget they're on chaperoning duty shit even the principal will start wilding out once you got the right song playing motherfuckers will get hype over anything like remember how hype it was when someone would land a flip in the middle of a mosh pit shit remember how hype it was when someone didn't land a flip in the middle of a mosh pit these motherfuckers were excited as ever like they didn't just witness a dude snap his neck poor guy's probably getting trampled down there rest in peace sacrifice his life for a few snapchat memories but you know that one song that when the dj throws that hoe on everybody knows what to do motherfuckers will run in from the bathroom teachers will hop in the redditors will hop off the bleachers and the school dance will be looking like something straight out of high school musical bro speaking of high school musical back in the day i knew a dude named troy i fucked with troy but let's just say he had a little bit of a lean gut he, he was built like t grizzly Nah, fuck that. He was built like DJ Khaled. And I remember this dude, Troy, was just coming off a of school suspension. But for whatever reason at the dance, this motherfucker must have been looking for another one. Because Troy came up to me talking about how he was going to beat Jordan Johnson's ass at the dance tonight. And honestly... I ain't believe in him. So once the dance came around, he was beefing JJ every chance that he got until soon JJ wasn't gonna stand for it. Now a school dance is simply the best time for a school fight to take place for the dude who wins. For the dude who loses, you literally have every single motherfucker in your school gathered in one place to get several different 4K angles of you getting pieced up. So Troy was really putting everything on the line here because JJ was known for handing out whoopings like food stamps. But to be fair, Troy loved food. Regardless, JJ wasn't scared. In fact, he threw the first punch. Boom. But Troy ate that shit like a Wendy's 4 for 4 combo. And instantly, the entire school gathered in a circle. The circle was so big, there was no escaping. They were gonna have to fight to the death. But the DJ was so locked in that he was completely oblivious to what was happening. He was playing some happy-go-lucky ass shit. Oh, shit. Ooh. Damn. Yo, get his ass. Let's go. Please. Beat his go ass, Troy. JJ. Yo, no I'm Jordan Troy. Johnson. Now, the moral of that story is uh, to don't get into a fight at the school dance. Uh, unless you know you're gonna win now on another note asking someone to dance is a very important topic when it comes to school dances now girls I i'm sorry i can't help you with this one i've never asked a dude to dance before but boys shit i can't help you either i'm like over 15 with this shit but i do know someone who can i'm talking about the homie bob so bob uh how do you ask a girl to dance w watch and learn i what, is this motherfucker moonwalking right now? Oh, oh shit. Oh, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> you look high as hell. Uh, a little bit too high. B bro, are you good? Damn, I've been there, bro. But don't worry. I know just what you need. Wait, wait what's that over there? <laughs> Shit, are you still high? 
damn, that usually works. You really gotta be high as shit, huh? All right, listen, listen, uh, just chill out, bro. I know you probably think you're ODing on Mary Jane, but trust me, you can't. In fact, scientists say you would need to smoke at least 20,000 joints in 15 minutes to OD. And trust me, once you hit the 16,000 joint mark, your lungs will be looking like dehydrated SpongeBob. Oh shit, speaking of dehydrated SpongeBob, you're looking like dehydrated SpongeBob. So here, drink some water. You gotta quench that cotton mouth and water's always a safe bet to flush out some of that unneeded THC. But you know what tastes better than water? Some goddamn motherfucking lemonade. So find the nearest lemonade stand and absolutely ravage that shit. Leave no lemons to spare because science says lemons contain limonene, which is a compound that can counteract the THC by calming your brain. Another solid way to calm down from a crazy high is sniffing some peppercorn. Whoa, 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 wrong line, bro. You're trying to get less high. You're supposed to sniff this one. Okay, okay, now how you feeling? Damn, still too high? God damn, how much did you smoke? Shit. Oh, I know just what you need. A dap pen. No, 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 listen. This is no regular dap pen. This is a CBD pen. Now when you take a hit of this bad boy, the CBD compounds in your brain will sit in the chair the THC would have sat in, meaning the THC can no longer infiltrate your brain and convince you there's somebody in your walls. Plus, the CBD can help you chill out a little bit. So here, take a hit. Oh fuck, wrong one, wrong one. My fault, my fault. Uh, here's the CBD one. Okay, okay, now before I keep telling you everything you should be doing, it's pretty important to hit you with a few common mistakes motherfuckers make when they get too high. <clears throat> Do not attempt any of the following. Call an ambulance. Call your mom. Smoke more. Eat oranges. Watch horror movies. Cook with oil. Start a fire. Going into a public setting where speaking is necessary. Spend your life savings on food. Operate heavy machinery. Convince yourself you're the only real human person on the planet and everyone else is really just an AI programmed to pretend like humans and everyone you've ever known wasn't even really a human including your mom, your brother, your home, or driving don't drive now generally if you avoid all these dumbass ideas you should be chilling so now that we got that out of the way the best way to ride out a high is to gather all the finest munchies in the game which include but are not limited to ice cream sweet heat doritos cheetos pizza some mickey d's milkshakes reese's peanut butter cups pizza rolls chicken strips any sort of fruit and of course cinnamon toast crunch and once you've prepared a meal fit for champions you can then throw on some absolutely amazing top tier youtube content or if you're really trying to get invested a cartoon now choosing a cartoon is gonna feel like one of the most important decisions of your life so i'm gonna let you know right now just choose anything bro your high ass could sit and watch coca melon for hours so just choose a safe bet like the most goaded show of all time the amazing world of gumball now once you've chosen your show stop thinking so much and let the show do its thing because in just a few minutes you're gonna be invested and when i say invested i mean you will invest your entire consciousness into the show like shit you'll be in the show you'll be out here posted up with gumball and darwin and you can even chop it up with gumball's fine ass mom and before you know it you're 25 episodes deep and then you step back and realize everything's gonna be all right all right next up we got billy presenting his baking soda volcano experiment <laughs> hey hey guys how we doing all right, so uh, you see if I put a, a solid amount of baking soda in here and then uh, a little bit of vinegar here. <clears throat> um, uh, it, it's supposed to explode. Oh, no. oh, fuck. Quickly, organize a single file line in alphabetical order. Hey, I'm first. No, you're not, bro. I'm first. Your last name is literally Johnson. I have two last names. Listen, bro, I'm not saying we shouldn't have school drills and all, but what I am saying is the school drills we do have are straight bullshit. Like if there was a fire in my class, I'm jumping straight out the window, the fuck? There is no way you'll catch me waiting for Alexander and Arnold to debate who's first in line while I'm out here getting sauteed. And shit, fire 
our drills aren't even close to being the worst of the drills because we got lockdown drills. Now, I don't know who planned out these drills, but god damn, these drills are ass. Now, if you never had lockdown drills, they're pretty much a foolproof plan set in place to completely counter anyone pulling up to school with a strap. You see, the plan is pretty simple. You lock the door, gather all the students into the corner of the class, and you turn the lights out. And the reason we turn the lights out is so we can politely tell the intruder that nobody's home. Now, if every classroom followed these steps perfectly, we might even be able to convince the dude that it's a pro D-Day or something. Now listen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I really do, but there's one minor flaw in this plan. The, the, the shooter's in the class, bruh. You're out here telling the opposition your exact game plan. Then you're surprised when bro pulls up to the hiding spot. Like shit, it's just easy pickings at this point. Now, earthquake drills, man. The game plan here is to essentially hop under your desk and start counting. Now, when I was in kindergarten, I thought this whole earthquake drill thing was a fun game we played to learn how to count. But 12 years later, we were still counting. Like, let's be honest. What the fuck is counting gonna do? Are you telling the earthquake how long it has to dis? dismantle the school because i'm pretty sure it doesn't give a shit how long it takes me personally i feel like the best way to see if an earthquake is over is by observing whether or not the entire fucking building is shaking but listen i will say this out of all the drills the earthquake drill is pretty valid like whoever thought of this one was kind of cooking i mean these desks are pretty much made out of steel bro like out of all my years i've never seen one break before so it probably provides some solid protection but shit, me personally, I'm still jumping through the fucking window, bruh. I don't care how many times I practice crouching under my desk. If I ever felt the slightest shake in the ground, I'm out of that hole. So if you carry the 674 to the power of 2 over to the 47, you will find- Oh shit! Well, well, why did change just dive out of the window? Shit, I don't know. Now I'm gonna keep it a stack. I've never done a single tornado drill in my life. So after doing some quick research, it looks like you just, um, you, you, you do this. Now I don't know shit about tornadoes, but what I do know is that I'm not gonna be doing this shit. Like, I'm no scientist, but I don't think the doggy position is gonna stop the tornado from packing you up. So to be honest, once again, I'm jumping out the fucking window, bro. Like, that's just my default reaction. And if that tornado ends up putting me on a t-shirt, then so be it. At least the last position I was in before I died was not the face down, cheeks up pose. But bro, imagine being the kid who poorly timed his piss and now the fire alarm's going off midstream. And you don't even get to know if it's a drill or not. Then there's the whole do you wash your hands dilemma, right? Because cause you don't want to get trapped in the fire and fucking die. But on the other hand... You don't want to just not wash your hands. Because if it's a drill, then, then then you're just left with dirty ass hands. And while you're trying to decide whether to wash your hands or not, the class is outside taking attendance like... Rosalina. Here. Jared. Here. Chains. Chains? Oh, fuck. W -w where did Chains go? I don't know, bruh. Shit. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, I was just in the bathroom. Woo. Oh, you, you scared me there for a second. Wait. Did, did, did you wash your hands? Mm, no. I, I was in a little bit of a rush. <laughs> Get back in there and wash your hands, buddy. Uh... Now the thing about school drills is they happen pretty often. I mean, every few weeks they throw in a fire drill here and a little earthquake drill there. So when the fire bell actually goes off, motherfuckers just assume it's a drill. They're out here horsing around, making jokes and shit, while the school's actually getting fucking cremated. But after almost all the drills, our alphabetical single file line goes out to the front of the school and on the field with every other class. And the amount of buffoonery that goes down on this field is insane. Bro, I mean everyone walks in with a single file line, but after five minutes that shit looks like a Travis Scott concert, bro Like I remember one time my high school got a bomb threat called in So every class assembled the good old alphabetical line and we went out onto the field and we were out there for a minute, bro I remember looking around and these motherfuckers were running the world's biggest game of duck duck goose Like there wasn't a whole ass bomb threat called into our school that same day one kid brought a football to the field and all of a sudden 
motherfuckers are running a pickup game while we're waiting to see if our school is gonna explode or not. And of course the teachers tried to stop it, but these kids just used that as a diversion play and got another touchdown. Alright, so now that we thoroughly dissected each and every school drill, it's only fair we hit them with a tier list. So let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, oh, we're starting with lockdown drills. What, what are we saying? Uh, fucking F tier. Holy shit, they are ass. <clears throat> All right. Uh, ne next up, we got fire drills. Now these drills do get the job done, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not fucking with this whole single file alphabetical bullshit. So I'm gonna have to give this John a C tier. Now tornado drills. Uh, y you gotta go in the doggy position, bro. I got no choice but to give this a D tier. And last but not least, my personal favorite, earthquake drills. Th they're still kind of ass b tier and bro i know some of y'all may be thinking you you can't just talk shit about the school drills and, and not present any better solution well lucky for you i have devised the best and only way to fully counter any natural or artificial disasters it's simple for a guy like me who's seven feet 325 pounds 0.5 percent body fat and a seven foot wingspan i just simply remove myself from the situation however i do understand that i am built different so for your average joe i have devised another plan it's also simple the moment some shit goes down everyone runs at full speed out of the building and of course some would argue that not everyone is gonna be able to make it out of the building in time and that some people are fast and stronger than others and you know what that's called natural selection you see if i was principal instead of running students through these impractical drills i would be running students through a different kind of drills i would have my students in peak physical condition instead of a fire bell i would have a push-up bell at any given time if that shit goes off you drop down and give me 50 or your ass is getting expelled you see this way when there's a fire everyone can simply remove themselves from the situation or in other circumstances they can simply intervene <laughs> April 20th, 420. The day when everyone puts their differences aside and they just hotbox the Earth's entire atmosphere. Man, what a time to be alive. Now, I don't know if any of y'all have gone to one of those 420 conventions before, but god damn. These motherfuckers be getting higher than Buzz Lightyear, bro. Like at this point, they aren't even baked. They're, they're fucking deep fried they just be walking around hotboxing cities at a time and anyone in a 500 foot radius is gonna start feeling the effects of that mary jane like i remember my first time going to one of these things and uh i, I was still a minor with an o however i had done some pregame before the convention so let me just put it like this if i was a potato I would have been a baked potato. So heading into the convention, I was already a little bit paranoid because as I looked around, all I could see was a bunch of hippie dudes with beards and shit. And at the time, I was just repping that peach fuzz. I, I was standing out like a sore thumb. So you can only imagine how hard I was shitting my pants when my high ass saw a cop walking in my direction i instantly started brainstorming how i was gonna outmaneuver this cop so he doesn't send my ass to jail so boom busted a right dropped the shoulder hit a left and i ran into this crowd of people and i don't know about y'all but for me whenever something remotely scary happens while i'm zooted i'm gonna be paranoid for the rest of my high so in my high ass brain I i'm like a wanted criminal I, I got five stars right now so i'm out here constantly scanning the area for 12 right but i start to make some notable observations i realize half these motherfuckers are wearing sunglasses and it's not even sunny like how the fuck did i miss the memo this bad but luckily for me there's hundreds of dudes selling overpriced random ass shit so it really didn't take long for me to find a dude selling sunglasses and even though it was 25 bones for these shitty ass sunglasses i still cop them so i can hide my identity and of course the glasses have the devil's lettuce plastered all over them but i'm el chapo level wanted at this point so i'm doing anything i can to hide my identity including dropping my life savings on these dog shit glasses. So I'm out here pushing through these groups of people, but I'm keeping it low key. And as I'm scanning to the right of me and to the left of me, my dumbass pretty much walks right up to a cop. And the moment I realized that homie was right in front of me looking at me, 
I started to panic, bro. I felt like at this point, my best option was just to confess. Like, if I take the plea deal, I'll definitely get a lower sentence. But as I was stressing heavy, that adrenaline starts to kick in. And I know some of y'all can relate to this, but the scientific breakdown shows that when you're zooted and you get into a high stress scenario, the adrenaline gears up and starts beefing with the THC in your brain. Now, if you're lucky, the adrenaline will beat the THC's ass and will have you thinking properly in said stressful situation, which is exactly what happened to your boy. So as I transformed from a baked potato into a less baked potato, this is where the table really started to turn. I looked at this cop in the eyes and this motherfucker was more baked than me. Like shit, at this point, I'm about to put this dude on citizen's arrest. Uh, officer, are, are, are you baked right now? No, no, it, uh, there's a... <clears throat> Sorry, there, there there seems to be a lot of cannabis in the air right now. And so it's like <laughs> this poor officer probably had to pull an eight hour shift in the world's biggest hot box while trying to do his job. And needless to say, after realizing the officers were faded than a hoe, I had no problem walking around with my peach fuzz mustache smoking on that Mary Jane. Yo, when you think about it, every light switch is also a dark switch. Light switch, dark switch, light switch, dark switch. Okay class, sound it out with me. But all ball. When you really think about it, we learn to read, and then we read to learn. Uh, teacher? Teacher, yeah, I, I think change is high. What the, the fuck? This is kindergarten. Damn, any staircase 